Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All praise, all glory, all honor to the Holy One of Israel, whose name alone is Yah. Most merciful, full of loving kindness, our Savior, our Redeemer, the most glorious. He was, who is, yes, who forever shall be. Yes, there is none with him. There is none desired before him. There will be none after him. For he is our life, the length of our days. He is time. And existence yes. itself. Yes, he is our healer, yes. our shield, yes. our buckler, yes. our everything. Yes. And his love yes, sir. is unbounded. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Lasting from generation to generation. We give him thanks yes, for his healing. Is humility. Yes, for he is humbled our worst of times. Yes, a perfect state of harmony yes, with him. Yes, so a thousand words cannot convey our debt to the Almighty for our lives. So the best, greatest gift we can give to him. Is all beating. So let's bless him this day. Yes, sir. Thanking him for his holy Sabbath day. Which he has given as a gift yes. unto them that fear him and reverence his holy name. Let us give him again all thanks, all praise, yes, all glory, yes. and all honor. Yes. Magnifying him and his holy name. Hallelujah. And Yah is righteous all the time. All the time. Be seated. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody that has been able to make it within the confines of this. Praying to Yah that this day is finding you in. Good spirit, sound mind, and able body, the peace and blessing of the Most High Yah being upon you. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to all those that are tuned in, watching all manners of social media, praying that this day too is finding you in good spirit, sound mind, and able body, the peace and blessing of the Most High Yah. Being upon. Oh, Beautiful day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 After this, Almighty bless us with. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Beacon of a beacon of light. I yes, see why you should say that. That light, yes, sir. Never searches. The righteous are always gonna look for light, not darkness. We are going to embark on some questions before we do. Do we have any questions from the congregation here today? That they wish to put forth. <laughs> Where is my lovely Ellen? I know she had it. Said she had a question, and she didn't get a chance to ask on um, through the course of the week when we met on the new moon.
She didn't want to put it. Oh, I, I was disturbed. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you have a question from the from through the week? Yeah, we take it now. If it was just about, um... I know you said you want to ask it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Yahweh. Give our praise, glory, and honor. Holy one of Israel, Magdalene Yahweh, creator of heaven above the earth beneath the waters under the earth, father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and also my father. By saying hallelujah. 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 Okay, I can't see. That's all right. It started in. Genesis. Oh no, no, yeah. Genesis three. It was about the serpent, mm -hmm. and and when uh, when it first started out in three and one, it says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field mm -hmm. which Yahweh Elohim had made. Now. A serpent. Is that a beast or is that like a, a reptile family? He was a beast. He started out. I just wanted to know. This is my question. What he was before uh, Yahweh cursed him? Because when he cursed him, he told him that he was going to be on his back. Yes, ma'am. And that's what he is as a serpent already. So that was what he was already doing. So I was just wondering what he was when they said he was a beast and then he was a serpent as well. All right. So that was just my question, what he was before he was cursed. All right. But I thought that too. Very good. But you just said uh, but hallelujah. Because that's what that's what some have explained. He's a man, he was a man. That he was a man. Yeah. Well, we don't that's what I, I thought that's what. Yes, ma'am. We, I know in the Christian church, definitely that's what they understand is that they'll give some of them. But we're gonna but we're gonna see. Okay, and those that have been influenced by the Christian church, and mm -hmm. then those that have been influenced by just simply, if I can be frank, just making up something. <laughs> but we're gonna see what the book has to say. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, I'm under praise the Lord, the uh, um, Shabbat Shalom. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a question on the same lines of my sister. Um, I was watching um, one of the little animal shows yesterday, and uh, I had a good time watching it. I was more into the, it was supposed to be me and my nephew watching it, but he was busy playing with toys or something. But the, so my question is, I've, so it went back like like it went through a timeline and it went back like millions and whatever years ago um and when it comes to like certain things that i watch i try to align it with scripture god i know uh you know how they try to you, you just have to watch things because they try to say like uh we come from monkeys and stuff like that and so they were showing the um the uh the likes the i don't want to say the lifespan but the timeline of oh, yeah. each animal Yes, uh, it, 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 the one and it, it, it was like like they show like for example the only one I can remember because the rest of them I can't remember. Um, I'm gonna tear their names all the way up, but it was like like the octopus, but it, it was like this big cone thing that looked like it reached the top of the ocean, but it was on the ground floor and you know, but it the drastically changed over time. And so uh, my question is, you know. Um, which you may or, or may not know, you might do your research too, but I said I'm gonna study on it as well. Like I said, I just watched it yesterday. Um, do the the insects, insects that they were talking about that like lived in the ocean too? And I was like, huh, you know, it was just very interesting. Like this particular insect, uh, like they had one that came from um, that that evolved or the what is it, the the uh, shrimp so called evolved from a thousand a million years ago you know um i think it's called the show was called um 
in the planet today or something like that. I have to go home and check on and, and read it and then text it to you so y'all can see what I'm talking about. But do the animals have a, a like, do they, did they evolve, you know, from a million years ago? You know, because, you know, we hear about dinosaurs and then we learned in scripture that they did exist with the Levi- Leviathan, whatever the thing called. Um, yeah. So is it all the animals, you know, they got a, I know it's a kind of crazy question, but no, is, no. all the animals got that, you know, where a million years ago, they didn't evolve from things beyond our eye, you know, or is it just, because I didn't know. I just thought it was, you know, just a few of them. I don't know why I thought that, but I just thought it was a few, but it was, the show of y'all watching is very interesting. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was just talking to the TV and everything, but it's, it was it was really enlightening, but I also know you gotta watch it because sometimes they will tell you crazy stuff and then you won't be knowing what to believe. You know, they either believe something that they ain't even the truth. And so I just want to make sure that when I as I took that in, that it is the truth and it ain't nothing that somebody that made up. Hallelujah. It's not a liar. Right. <laughs> 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 don't have to worry about them. Okay. Now that I, I, I've heard of them. I know that ain't nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I, I got a far fetched uh, question. I wanted to know if bear meat was clean. All right. All right. All right. We on animals today. Bear meat is unclean and riddled with parasites. Yeah. We'll get there. Bear meat. Now, how is it the sweetest bear meat? <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet as bear meat. I would never know. Yeah. 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 Well, let's see about bear meat real quick. So it's sweet as uh, uh, bear meat. Uh, and I ain't never heard of nobody. Uh, he, he, <laughs> that that sounds like country right there. Like deep country. Well, let's go. Let's go to let's let's see about smoking. Let's go to let's go to let's let's see about smoking. And, and if we can put him on the smoke, let's go to Leviticus 11 chapter. He said, put Smokey on the smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Leviticus. Oh. Leviticus chapter 11. Hallelujah. Just one cautionary tale. He's not going to emphasize whether or not something is parasitic as to whether or not. That's your determining factor of ingesting it. But he gives us a clue. Or he gives us distinguishing characteristics. That's why I hear people say, well, I don't eat chicken because it can't fly. I say, well, every, everything that we're not supposed to eat, guess what? It can fly. And it does fly. Right. So if not flying is the reason why we don't eat it, then the chicken, huh? That just don't make no sense at all. Hmm? Because all them things we should be able to eat, because they fly. That's not the determining factor. But the determining factor found in Leviticus 11. Verse 27. Hallelujah. Le- Leviticus chapter 11, verse 27. And whoso and whatsoever, excuse me, and whatsoever 
Leviticus Lord, 11, yes, sir. And verse 27. Tell somebody need to know where we got. That's all. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 27. And whatsoever, whatsoever, go up upon his paws. But that have paws. That's our dogs. Okay. Huh? They got paws. Uh -huh. That's the wolf. Okay. He got paws. Lion, That's the lion. cat. He got paws. Yeah. Lion. He got paws. Huh? So that's the first thing we need to know. Okay. If it had what? Paws. And he said, whatsoever it is. Go upon his paws. Raccoons. They got paws. They got padded palm. Paws. Huh? Raccoons. All the little fellas. They if they have paws. Whatever it is that go up upon his paws. Among all manner of beasts. That go on all fours. Oh, brother Aaron, does the bear go on? You bet you about yes, a dollar he's going on all fours. He stand up when he needs to stand up. But if he chasing you, see if he chasing you on two legs, or if he chasing you on all four of his legs. And you're gonna find out when he catch up to you. And then if you jump in the tree thinking you're getting away from him, then he's gonna rear up and he's gonna show you stand on two legs what he can do. But he go on all four when he walking through the forest. When he walking through his habitat, he walk on all fours. He go on all fours. So again, whatsoever have paws. Among all manner of beasts that go on all fours, those are unclean unto you. Huh? Whoso touches their carcass shall be unclean until evening. Yeah, to go on all fours and have paws. It's unclean. Hold this. And let's go to, I think I want to go to Judges. Judges. Hallelujah. Fourteen chapter. Judges chapter fourteen. Hallelujah. Start at the seventh verse. Judges into the law. Huh? Chapter fourteen into the testimony of the law. Verse seven. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. Because I heard my brother talking earlier, and yeah, we you know we can't go a week without talking about the relationships. <laughs> That's just impossible, Harley. Huh? But we need to. Yes, sir. Because people don't talk about it. Well, no. Yes, sir. So it said in verse seven, Samson did what? Went down and talked with the woman. And she pleased Samson well. And after a time. And before that, let's go back. Okay. Let's start at one. Yes, Hallelujah. We get the gist of it. Yeah. Judges chapter 14, mm -hmm. verse 1. Yes. And Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Saying where they wish young men away today. Take them out the hood once they sign contracts and get money. They tell them, come here with me. We're going to go to this party. This is a party where they don't wear blue jeans and they don't wear sagging pants. So you need to put on a nice shirt, and nice slacks, nice suit. We're going to mm -hmm. get you one. And they put them in another place. They try to get them away from their environment that they know and surround them with different kind of people. And so Samson went down to Timnath, and when he went down to Timnath, he saw there a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Somebody not his people, huh? Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's right. Huh? And once he saw her, he was, came and back home. He came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath. Of the daughters of the Philistine. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never 
a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistine? And here he traveled south because he was a Danite. If you could look at that map, if anybody ever have a map, study a map, he was a Danite. So that's why I said he went down. He was a Danite, so he had to travel down and go into Philistine territory. And then he came back up, going back home. Yes? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she is for she pleases me well. Mm -hmm. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of Yahweh. They didn't know. That's why I say there is free will. And nobody can argue against that. But there's divine will. Hallelujah. There is the hand of Yah always at work, ever present. For he is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Want to ask where he's not? We can't tell you. That's why the psalmist said, if I make my bed in hell or Sheol, he's there. Oh, yeah. If I ascend and was able to get wings and think I'm going to fly away somewhere and hide out, he's there too. The very place I think I'm going to flee and get away from him from, guess where he at? There. He right there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So when you cut that light off with that young woman, huh? that you know you ain't interested in for a long term, and you say, so y'all don't see us. Because that's in your heart, that's what uh -huh. you're saying. Hmm? Yeah, they, they said the darkness is as the light. You might well keep them on. Because yeah. hmm? you see everything. And in the proper time, he's going to let you know. I saw you. I saw y'all. <laughs> Mama didn't see you. Daddy didn't see you. Her man didn't see you. Her husband didn't see you, but I saw you. Oh, wow. I saw you with your little yes, sir. painful yes, sir. self. Hallelujah. Huh? Yeah. Because he's there's no place that he's not. Hmm? So his hand is his hand. One has to look for his hand in everything. Hallelujah. In everything. Do not travel this life just thinking things is happening and some of them y'all don't know about or not interested in. His hand is in everything. Oh, God. And that's what the parents, hmm, that was said that they wasn't conscious of. Go ahead. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of Yahweh. That he sought in the cave against the Philistine. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then, since then, went Samson down and his father and his mother. See, he was to finding, he was finding the, an occasion and he was finding a person to work through. Hmm? Yeah. Then his father and his mother. Went down to Timna and came to the vine yards of Timna. Go back to three again. Hallelujah. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? See, they pleaded with him. They said, You sure, son? You sure that you interested in, in this Philistine woman? You mean of all the women? Here in the tribe of Dan, and you don't even have to stay here. Maybe you go over to the to the next Naphtali, or maybe you go somewhere else. But of all the daughters of Israel, you can't find you a woman that you must go to a people that historically, since we've been a people, have been at odds with us. You sure that's what you want to choose? Huh? Is there not a woman among the daughters? Of your brother, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistine. And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me. He said, yeah, I ain't even thinking about it. I, 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 won't, I won't hurt. Mm hmm. Get her for me, please. But well, she pleases me well. Mm -hmm. 
But his father and his mother knew not that it was of Yahweh that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Now, watch this. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnah and came to the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion roared against him. In other words, they went down as a family. The woman he was interested in, they went, the whole family went to see him. Mm. See, it's not just that you're going to marry her. No, that's not what we did. They, but the whole family was involved. I always teach that. They went down as a family. Huh? Mama can lay eyes on her. I don't think she's right for you, son. Daddy can look at it and say, I don't know. She be tripping. Huh? This is what you want. Huh? Now, of course, the young man, but his eye, his sight is blind. His sight is blind, so he needs some eyes. But they all went down as a family. And on the way down, a young lion did what? Roared against him. He roared against him. And the spirit of Yahweh came mightily upon him. But he didn't know who he was roaring at. Huh? Huh? The spirit of Yahweh came. He would have bring a kid. Somebody said, is Samson a superhero now? Because he couldn't have done this if the spirit of Yah didn't come upon him. Hmm? And it's the spirit of Yah that subdued the lion. Otherwise, that lion would have tore him up. Yes, sir. He would have clawed him from pillar to post. So, a cautionary tale. Don't just run out thinking if something come in front of your path, I'm going to fight off. Something as little as a, a possum or a raccoon would tell you the thread. You'd be over there and you see somewhere. Uh, <laughs> as opposed to man, by eyes or something, huh? Don't think, don't think that you just you gonna just run out there. Them little bad boys can be vicious, yes, and ferocious. Hmm? My dear brother, yeah, rest his soul. I remember talking with him one time, and he said, "Man, I went out, brother Ron." He said, "And I went to take the garbage out, and a raccoon was on the top of the can." He said, "Then I, I went out and I told him, I was like, get, get away." And he wouldn't move. He said, so I went in, I got my airsoft gun, my air gun. I came back out and I shot it. And I know I hit it. He said, and it bounced off of him. He said, the thing, he said, I went back in the house with the garbage and said, take it out tomorrow. I said, yes, sir. I said, yes, sir. You wild man. Huh? You a very wild man. Huh? Yeah, that thing, huh? He done shot it in that thing rare. Man, you better get out of here, man. You know, somewhere. So that's why it's important to read that and understand what it's saying. That the spirit of Yah moved through him, which one helped give him strength to do it, but also that spirit of Yah, it projected off of him, and the beast was afraid of him. That's why the creator said not even a dog should wag his tail at you. That don't mean that's all the time. If the y'all money ain't with you and the dog is growling and he look like he gonna take a chunk out of you, brother Aaron know to put some distance between him and that dog. But if the spirit of Yah is with me and the dog, then I know the spirit of Yah is, is coming emanating off of me and he gonna make the dog to be like nothing. It's just like Daniel and the lion then. That's the spirit of Yah. Oh, so God. the lion was subdued. It wasn't because Daniel fell down. They were like, oh, that's Daniel. No, they was, the Almighty went before him. And that's what the men that went down, that they threw down there after him, that's what they didn't have. They didn't have Yah with them. So them men couldn't even reach the bottom of the pit before the lions was jumping up, ripping them apart. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Continue. And the spirit of Yahweh came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. Mm -hmm. And he had nothing in his hands, but right. he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he didn't. And this was a secret. He didn't tell nobody he killed him. And he went down and talked with the woman, mm -hmm. and she pleased Samson well. Yeah, he went down and conversated with her. Let me talk to you. Let me rap to you. Huh? Yeah. 
I know y'all young fellas, y'all young. Let me rap to you. Huh? Yeah. And after a time. And after a time, he had re he returned to take her. After a time, what was that? Time went by. Mm -hmm. After a time, he returned to take her. After he used to go down and talk to her, huh? And get to know her. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. That took some time. Huh? Yeah. Yes. That was several conversations. There may have been some time where she was mad at him and she might have cussed him out. But that was good for him to get cussed out and see if he could take it and see if their relationship could go through some hard time, mm, some disagreement. That was good. Huh? Huh? You know, when we was young. Well, I ain't going to call you no more. Okay? Don't call me. Click. Then about an hour later, what you doing? The same thing I did when you said you weren't going to call me an hour ago. Well, somebody need to talk to you because ain't nobody else. Oh, uh, and you just then you find your way back to oh, girl, I, I love you and all this old kind of stuff. But yeah, huh? Let's go. And after a time, he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And watch how the scriptures put this together. We know that that wasn't a short time because what had happened to this lion? This is. Oh, there was a swarm and honey in the carcass of the lion. Because they started nesting within the cadaver. And that took time. Because bees don't build no nest overnight. That took time. And to get it full of honey, that took time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what it's showing you. And he took their of in his hand. And this boy, this boy bad. He just reached in there. Be nest, he reached in there and he's just snatching out honey huh? and went on eating and, and went on down the road eating and came to his father and, and mother. Watch this came to his father, came home to mom, came home to father and gave them, and they did eat and gave them huh, some of the same honey that he had, but but he told not them. That he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Why? Why? Elder, you want to help me? Because it was unclean. It was taken from the carcass of something that went on all fours, that walked on paws, that was dead. And at that time, it was unclean. It was unclean to be consumed itself. And anything that was in it was unclean. And he knew it was unclean. That's why he wouldn't divulge where he got it from. That's wisdom. What do I mean? That's wisdom. So you don't even have to. That's what you do. You have to find a way when you're with people today. Oh boy, that show sure looked good. Hmm. I was sure like a piece of that. Huh? How you make that? They start stumbling and fumbling, and then, then they let they let you know that it might not be so savory. Mm -hmm. Because a person asks me how I make something, I can tell them right off the bat. Oh, it was a little bit of this, yeah. it's a little bit of that, and I put a little bit of this in there and whipped it up real quick, and that's what it is. But if I got stuck, in, uh, 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 no, uh, what you like? Mm -hmm. What does it matter what I like? Huh? That's what I put in it. What you like? See that no, that's that's a little bit of bamboozling, huh? Hmm? Hmm? Trying to hide stuff. That's a little bit of misleading. And here, that's what he did. He hid it because he knew the source of it wasn't good. Hmm? Yes, sir. And he took their oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. read that so, line again. And he took their of in his hands. And went on eating. It came to his father. Ever goeth up on his paws on all fours. When it is dead, it is unclean to you. Did he not know the law? Yeah, that's why he ain't telling. Why did he eat it? He knew the law. People know the law today and do a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> huh? 
I mean, that that's, so I just got to be honest. So true. People know the law. I was at that a few weeks ago. People know the law. Huh? That's what the Almighty was trying to warn us with Adam. He said, man, I'm putting you in a state where it won't be a lot of friction with me. So don't touch the tree. Because in the day you touch the tree, that's going to give you a knowledge to be independent of me. And what they do? They touch the tree. Now they what? Now they got, that's what, because again, that's what died. Now they got a consciousness that's not waiting on y'all, not being all the time directed by y'all. Now they got a consciousness that say, I can do this or I don't have to do this. I know what he said, but I need to do it or not do it. And the creator know that as weak as we are, a lot of times we're going to fail the test. That's kind of like he told the children of Israel. That's what we were talking about the other week when he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Well, he meant that. But what does that mean to somebody that, that's wicked? Nothing. Because huh? we saw what it meant to him. Yeah. We saw what it meant to Jezebel. She said, mm -hmm. I, she said, if I don't kill you, like the rest of my prophet is laid out, if I don't kill you by the end of the day, y'all ain't, ain't living. Huh? Paraphrasing. Huh? Right. And and the prophet didn't think she was playing her. Oh, that girl, she's so silly. Man, he got out of Dodge. Because mm -hmm. he knows that the Almighty didn't mean a thing, and his word didn't mean a thing to her right then. And she was very serious about what she proposed to do. There's a lot of things he tells us not to do. And we don't heal. That's why he told us that the haters of Yah, and he wasn't talking about the nations around us, he said the first one that was hating was, was right. us. Yes, sir. He said, because I define this how I define love and hate. I don't know how y'all define love and hate, but I do know how people define love and hate nowadays. It's, it's crazy. But he said, I define love and hate by you keeping my commandments or not keeping my commandments. Oh, my God. Many people that say they love the Lord, they love God. No, they hate him. Yes. Because they don't want to keep his commandments. That's right. But by the mouth, that's what, see, a lot of things, that's why I say, you give me lip service. Oh, I love you. He the pre-praise. And then, Lord, hallelujah. He said, well, uh, that pork chop on your plate, throw that away in, because he don't like, he don't want nobody eating command. Uh-uh, no, see, you go too far. Who said that? That's you. That's in the book. Who wrote that book? He made everything and everything now they, good. Now they just start going through a lot of a lot of stuff. Huh? Well, that's what the almighty um, know. That's why I said like last week the question. That's why I said, yes, I kill, I'm coming back to destroy them that eat the swine flesh, the mouse, and the abomination. Because I know their thoughts, and their thoughts are thoughts of disobedience. And I know their works, because if your thoughts is thoughts of disobedience, then your works is going to be works of disobedience. In some manner, some faith, some shape, some form, it has to manifest itself, what's in your head. has to come out. It has to come out. And that's what the creator know. So he knew the law. That's why it was so much secrecy. Hmm? Now what I say, these cats, they know they're wrong. Pow, pow. You don't see them just standing with guns to the cop coming. Woo, woo, woo. Right, right. Huh? They pow, pow, and what? You don't want to get out of there. Huh? Fast as they can. Because they know they they know they wrong. The man that's ignorant that don't think he's wrong, you might catch him. Years ago, there was a young boy. He was mentally challenged. He set a place up. It went on fire. The whole building went up. Because he I think it was a firework place. You remember Alicia used to use this in there. And the whole building went up on fire. But the little boy couldn't decipher that he had did anything wrong. When they interviewed him and everything, he just, he, hey, he was enamored by the, the bang, the pow, the boom, and all. So he didn't decipher that he did nothing wrong. That's why he didn't run. That's why he had no kind of recollection. Huh? 
he would fall under the category of what the law called a sin of ignorance. Hmm? But no, but the man that said this said, like the man this week that went and grabbed the truck and drove it back to the license place bureau and ran it through. Y'all ain't hear about that? And ran it through the building. You, you, you hear about that? Huh? That wasn't ignorance. That wasn't ignorance. Because a few days ago, they denied him being able to get his CDL. Which probably was, and now a lot of people don't understand because they just say, hey, he, he ran. That's a fool. He ran. He's not a fool. You have to think. They have denied this man who profession probably was his truck driver. They have just told him that he can't drive no more. Therefore, you have just told him he can't make a living. You don't, and so then you don't know the burden that he's carrying. And you put this news on top of that, that he can't work. And then if that's what he's been doing most of his life, he don't figure he can go anywhere else and make the money he's been making. You just interrupted his life. That's why the creator said, going back many weeks ago, he said, do not take the what? Neither stone nor other stone huh, for pledge because you disrupting this person's what? Livelihood. Huh? But to tell him so to tell him he can't make a living. And if he under pressure, well, what was his response? He ain't gonna respond like maybe you would. Your mom might tell you, okay, I, I go get him. No, his mom told him before we go. Anyway, he got truck, came back and rammed it into the building. Huh? Backed up and was going to do it a second time. Well, that's not ignorance. That's not ignorance. Hmm? Huh? Yeah, he, he meant every bit of that. Hmm? These things are not ignorance. Any almighty know. So people do things every day. That's what's called sin. Yes, sir. See, I, I, most people might, some people might read this and be like, oh, Samson, he didn't. But that's what, don't we sin? Yeah. I know I do. Yes, sir. I know I do things. Huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Huh? Lesson in it. Trying to get it out. Right. Hmm? But it creeping. Oh, I know I shouldn't. Hmm? That's right. Well, people sin every day. Oh, why, why we have David Thomas? And some of them are willful. Hopefully, it's not many of them. Hopefully, most of them are through ignorance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm? So it's not a Samson. He, he, he's one of a million. Did not our great King David? Was that ignorance or was that willful? Willful. willful. You got to sit there like a cat got your tongue. That was willful. He knew the law. He better no law. He king. He judge. He's supposed to be the person dispensing the law and the judge. So he knew better than anybody. From the moment he laid eyes on Bathsheba when she was purifying herself, and he walked on the turn away. Like you know, turn away, turn away. He said, "No, go get that woman." The whole while that whole thing going down, he know he already guilty. So yeah, he knew the law. And that is the law. So bear meat. Hmm? What we say about bear meat, everybody? We won't never know if it's sweet. Not if we keep the law. <laughs> we won't never know. We won't never know. I sure want to be a fair skin. We won't. 
Then you go get you one of them synthetic ones that they made over there in Taiwan or something. <laughs> I like you can't walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any comment on that before we move on? Hmm? Hmm? Don't look. question was that about Christ. I can't tell you. Well, I can't tell you something, but I'm gonna tell you one about his cousin. New Testament said that John was dressed. Now, it does depend on what book you might read. But the New Testament said that John was dressed in a bolster of camel hair. That's his clothes that he wore. He didn't wear nothing smooth. He didn't wear nothing fancy. He wore something rough and akin to sackcloth. Real quick, turn to Matthews 3 and 4. I'm only doing this so we can we can learn something. Matthews, the book of Matthews, New Testament. We're gonna jump here and we're gonna jump back. Like Chapter 3, verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. Had a raiment or clothing of what? Camel's hair. Camel's hair. And a leather girdle about his loins, and his food was locust and wild honey. Somebody tell me what's wrong with that. I think the camel was unclean. But the locust is not. No, it's fine. Locust honey. Locust is clean, but the camel wild hair. I mean, the camel hair is unclean. Cause and although you, the camel chew the cud, and how do you know that? Because the camel, the camel chews the cud, but if you look at his hook, his not hook is not clothed. But okay, but where is it at? That's what you tell me. Ah, that's in Leviticus eleven. All right, there. <laughs> 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 Because I guarantee you, that you just telling me that's when they're gonna work out. Well, who told you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Where you at? Huh? And it says right here in 11. Yes. And two, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever parted the hook. And is cloven footed and chewing the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, of them that divide the hoof, as the camel. As the what? As the camel. As the camel. Because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. He is unclean unto you. So in his state of death, he's unclean. Huh? So somebody huh, should have told John you unclean. to take that off because you're wearing an unclean garment. Hmm? That's all I want to show you. I know many of y'all don't like going to New Testament. That's why I can keep you there. We'll get back to the word you don't want. But like my teacher you say, sometimes you go in the dark with the light to bring people back out to the light. Hallelujah. And it ain't suffice to tell people they're doing wrong when you can't show them why they're doing wrong. Yes, sir. You, you're nailing that in wrong, son. 
Let me show you. Boom. Boom. Huh? You know it in wrong. I'm gonna nail it like I want to nail it. Okay, go ahead. Bye. And then they hit, ah. Now let me show you why I told you it was wrong. The way you hold it. The way you even hold your hammer. This is how you hold a hammer when you're driving this in. This is what you do. Huh? You show them. All right. So that's the only reason why a lot of times we might go there to show certain things. But back to the Holy Scriptures. You are you good, Elvin? Yes. All right. All right. Now let's get to the serpent. We we got the beast today. That's all right. Let's get to the serpent. Because I too have heard over years that he was a man. Hmm? Yes, sir. Well, let's see if that's what the scriptures say. Let's go to Genesis. No further than Genesis 3. And what? And 1. Genesis chapter 3. Mm-hmm. Verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can see this is one of those riveting Sabbaths because I see the enthusiasm on everybody's face that they learn it. We're going to get through it, though. We're going we to march through it. <laughs> we gonna, yeah, that's what I say. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Genesis 3 and 1. Hallelujah. And boy, now. and boy, that's what daughters are for. Because, boy, if I, my daughter is like the three mighty men, if by now I would have had me a couple of water or a bottle of water or something up here to, to quench my thirst. My daughter would love them. I would have had four bottles of them young men that, that I would have labored with and stuck out with and hung out with. They just sitting there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He gets some water when he gets home. We don't care that it's what <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. No cost. Yahweh Elohim had made. The Nakash, that's the root. And that's, the, that's the root. That's what it, it says. Why? Why Han Nakash? Why Han Nakash? Why Arum? Now the serpent. In Hebrew, that's what it says. Now the serpent. Hmm? Surely the Almighty knows the difference between a serpent. Since this is the beginning of creation. Yeah. Where was he created at then? Where is it recorded at? The only man that existed at this time is Adam. And his wife, if you talk about mankind collective. Yes, sir. But if you're talking about man, it's out. So they got, or well, should be able to show you where this man is at. Because I've heard that. Well, it was men before Adam. Well, here's my first question. Where did these people live? Right. Seeing that there was no dry land. If you stay with the whole narrative, where did these people live? When there was no dry land. Huh? When the world was in darkness. If you're going to read all the way to Jesus, it don't compute that there was people when the conditions wasn't even favorable for life. That's why the creator said when he looked upon the earth, he said, Vavohu tohu. It was void and it was empty. Now, how could the Almighty be telling us it was void and empty 
And yet, somebody telling me that it was people here, a life here. I got to believe one or the other. And everybody know who they're going to believe. Huh? Hmm? Yes, sir. Oh, like I said, yes, we this is riveting. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, the serpent was more subtle than any what? Beast. See, the field. see, there's still some serpents, and guess what they walk on? They walk on all fours. Yes, they do. Tomorrow's Looking right. like a beast. Tomorrow's on the right. Galapagos Islands, called it's such a thing called the Komodo dragon. Yes. And he walk on, he's very low to the ground, but he walk on four. And he drags his tail. And he has a head. And he has a tongue. And his mimic, his characteristics, you would think is much like a snake. And yep. here's the thing. They don't call him or put him with the reptile family. They put him with mammals. Yep. What? More subtle. And the word Nahash. Again, language. Where did it come from? Nahash referring to his ability to That's what it always did. The beast at one time. Like all the rest of the beasts of the field. Which Yahweh had what? Made. Mm -hmm. Now if it was a man, he would have told us it was a man. But he told us about the man that he made. The only man that he made. That he made in his image. Did he make the serpent in his image? I'm saying these things so we can think. Because if you get people to think and just like let them say stuff, then you had them off. Huh? Does, does this man made in the image of, if it is a serpent, is he made in the image of Yah? With a long tongue? Listen? Huh? And all the characteristics of a serpent that we know it? Is that our Yah? Of course it's not. Hmm? Our Yah is like what? You? And me, that we were made in the image of Elohim and after his likeness. So it was just as the Almighty said it was, it was a beast which this particular sir didn't start on his belly. That's why he's cursed. That's why he's cursed. Because he's a beast, and he's on the level of all the beasts that the Almighty made. Until he does what he does, and so we go further. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent, hmm? because you have done this, what? Huh? Because you have deceived. Because you have worked deceit. When you look up that, look up serpent as you that's what it's gonna say as well a deceiver hmm? that's why people that we know that go around talking about people behind their back old school what we used to call it you say he's just a low down snake in the grass right. somebody always keeps something going you say he's a snake in the grass huh deceiver a cunning person that's what we used to say at our time don't fool him he a snake in the grass Gonna get you messed up. Mm. Old school, those that old school of our people that would interpret dreams. That was the worst thing you could see. It's snakes in your dream. Mm. The interpretation you go to them, you ask them and say, Man, I dream about snakes. They say, Your enemy. Your enemy's after you. Your enemies is after you. Yeah, your enemies. You got enemies. And they acted. Yeah. That was the interpretation. Hmm? So Christ said unto him, because you have done this, because you're guilty, you are cursed. Hmm? Above all cattle. Hmm? That don't mean he said him. It's not an oxymoron. You curse above all. No, you curse above all cattle. Understand the language. 
that compared to the cattle, I'm going to make you the lowest thing. You used to walk on fours like all the other beasts, but now physically and the way people perceive you, I'm going to make you low. So I'm going to curse you above all cattle, above all, every beast of the field, so you be cursed. And you'll go from the state you in now to being upon your belly. Should I go? Thus, should you eat? Because hmm? that's how low he is. All the days of your life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Hmm? And between your seed and her seed. And let me tell you what else, because in the breakdown, when you look it up, it also, when it refers to this serpent, it also refers to enchantment. In witchcraft, the snake is a very powerful piece of enchantment. It's the, one of the main tools of enchantment. That witches and warlocks that practice that art, that's what they use. Go down to New Orleans. I'm sure it's a beautiful city. But I ain't lost none down in New Orleans <laughs> that I want to get down there anytime soon. Because <laughs> it got a lot going on. I ain't everybody, but I know it have a lot going on down there. That you have to be careful. Because hmm? it's made up. Not getting that another day. Just is the way it's populist is made up. And a lot of cultures met in New Orleans that believed in a lot of things. So it ain't nothing to go down there and see people, snake charmers, and diviners coming out of little places with snakes wrapped around their neck and telling you they can they could talk about this and show you this and show you that. All kinds of things that the creator told us ought not be done. But the creator said he put enmity between the woman and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his head. I said that ain't that I'm scared because actually I kind of dealt with snakes. But the other day, but it's a natural inclination. I was in the yard the other day and I saw something laying on the ground. It was black and it was long. I said, oh, man. I said, that's a snake. I said, I hope y'all don't think I'm Moses. <laughs> so I, I back up. I looked and I said, hey. I said, oh, that's a tree branch. <laughs> but the way tree branches did, it was one that was crooked. I said, oh, I, I picked it up. I said, yeah. <laughs> But you no, know, ain't no Moses here. I don't even know him, Jack. Yeah, I get up out of there. Because it's a natural inclination, even though I've had my fair share, even touching them and different things. The first thing you're going to do when you see one, you're going to jump. That's that natural instinct, natural inclination. Because that's what the Almighty put there. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between our seed and her seed. He shall bruise. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. He's speaking to the serpent. Huh? So when you want to kill one, you don't whack at his tail. You smack that head. You yak it. Huh? Take that head off. And when he's trying to strike at you, I ain't seen one jump all the way up and try to bite nobody on their neck. He bites you from the knee down. That's where you strike at. That's where he'll strike at. Hmm? Then, of course, he go on to the woman to tell her her punishment. And of course, he tell Adam his punishment because nobody is innocent in this matter in the sight of the eye. Everybody is guilty. That's why people are like, no. Some people that, again, don't know what they're talking 
It's the woman. She tricked Adam. Well, if she tricked him that much, the Almighty would have been that hard on him. All right. No, he 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 dealt that punishment to him because again, he knew what he was doing. That's right. And he was being this. And if you want to say anybody was had the most disobedience in him, it was Adam. It was Adam. That's right. Because the commandment not to touch the tree came right from the Creator. He got it from Adam. But the commandment not to touch it was given to him. That's right. So he had more weight on what he did than even his wife did. Right. And sometimes some men, sometimes some teachings like to switch that around. And then they start going into other stuff. That's why you got to listen to your man and don't argue. <laughs> and they getting all this whole kind of crazy stuff. And that did and this woo teaching to try to get you to throw your head off. Because you less because if Mother Eve wouldn't have listened to the serpent and they going all this. Uh, no, nah, you tell them the greater the greater sin was out. Because he should have took whatever she gave him and like woman, what I tell you? Boom. What you get, huh? Did you touch that tree? That's the time that he exerted his his dominance. His leadership. Hey, did you you touch that tree? Smack it out of hand. Who told you the serpent did? Well, I gotta go see him now. Hmm? Yeah, I gotta go see him now. Hmm? Yeah. Not this woman was wicked. So she needs to be subjected. You need to rule hard. No, fool. You just want somebody you can pick on. That's all. You want a wife? You just want to be a bully. Hmm? Yeah. So no, he wasn't a man. He was a beast, and he was a beast like all the rest of the beasts that the scripture say that Yah had made that got cursed to be a low manifestation. Now, when we get into science and modern day language, now we got mammals and reptiles and classifications like that. So now he's a this a reptile and this a mammal. And, and so that's just the classical new age, if you will, way of classifying them and putting them in their places. Though. Things evolve, sure they do. But they don't change and become a whole complete another species. <laughs> see? Yeah, like the light. You see, the truth of the matter is, and some people will disagree, but the truth of the matter is, there's one wild, there's one wild family of dogs. There's one original family of dogs. And all species of dogs today come from that one original source of dogs. Well, it's just wild that because scripture don't come more open that it just know it's a it's one source, an original source. Now all the different breeds they come from in some kind of variation, they come from that original family, that one source of dog. But there wasn't cats that evolved and turned into <laughs> dogs. You don't change what you are. Okay. And that's why we rebel against talking about my daddy or granddaddy or great, 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 great granddaddy was an ape. Okay. Because his children, his lineage is still be giving birth to apes today. Right. Okay. And no matter how similar they are, they still apes. We humans okay. or we men. Right. Okay. We the sons of Adam, okay. not the sons of ape. If that's the case, I still should look to see. And I would think about this a good time of the year. Let's okay. stop this. Come on. This is just, huh? Just make sure when I do my research. Yeah, just stay with the, just with the script okay. base and put everything, put everything against the word of the Almighty. Okay. That's your base. That's, right. that's the beginning of every. That's why I said the fear of Yah is the beginning okay. of wisdom. A good understanding of all day that keep his commandments. He's going to give you understanding. The understanding we get of men, that, that's, that's madness. Because that's the mind of men. 
We would watch a song on Greek, the Greek gods. Man, it, it, it was madness. Just sheer madness. And you can see that that's the, out the mind of men. And not out the mind of the most high. So stay with this. And if it line up with this, you can give it some credence. Okay. If it don't make sense with this, put on the back burner. Okay. We have the prehistoric elephant. We have there is are maybe shorter. It's not as massive, but it's the same. We can go see them every day. The lion, the saber tooth tiger. Mm -hmm. We have a descent. It's right, right here. Yeah, yeah. It's not so much even evolution as it is adaptation as well. Adapt to be able to adapt. And Murray, you say you take a domesticated pig that's already rough. When you're dealing with the real deal, but drop them in the jungle. Go back in a few years to find him. His appearance gonna be totally different. He'll be what they call a razorback. With his tusks longer, his hair probably more prickly. His aggress his nature is ramped up a thousand than what it was just as a normal pig. Because and the color might even change because of adaptation, not necessary evolution. And the last thing I'll say on that is remember, evolution is called the theory of yeah, evolution. Yeah. Okay, so adaptation. Okay, so okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any comment on that from anybody? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have one more. Jeez, you got I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, going back to the surgery. Uh, I was wondering how exactly did he speak with the woman? And when he was cursed to go find his belly, did his speech also change? And if, if she was able to communicate with the surgery, then was she, was she also able to communicate with other beasts? Or how did, like, well, where I'm stuck at is how did she get to the point to where? She was able to talk to a serpent and it also talk back to her. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck at, was she off something? Or how did, how did that, what, how did, you know? No, you, you're not the only one, you're not the only one stuck. You're not the only one stuck. I got a cousin. I got a cousin. I went to his house one time for a function. And he said, man, that's why I don't believe the Bible. I said, well, I said, why you don't believe the Bible? He said, talking snakes. And then, uh, I said, but he had two dogs. This is what I did. He had two dogs. He said, talking snakes. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, that's possible. I said, let me ask you something. I said, you don't believe you can talk to your dog and your dog know what you're talking about? He said, I said, how else do you communicate with him? I said, when you tell him sit, does he not sit? He said, yeah. I said, when you tell him and give him directives, does he not follow your directives? He said, yeah. I said, he understands very well what you said. The only thing that's absent is his ability to verbally communicate back to you in the manner in which you understand. But his barking is verbal communication. Mm -hmm. And you don't know nothing now. The first thing you're going to do is, what's up? What's going on, boy? What are you doing? Huh? Am I right, Alan? Huh? His certain bark, his barking, his demeanor, he start running around and very agitated. He's trying to tell you something. It's a story I saw on the expose. A man didn't even know it. His heart was bad. He was on the verge of a heart attack. And he was in the kitchen. I saw it. I never got that out of my mind when they showed the show. He was in the kitchen fixing him something to eat. And the dog was in the kitchen and he was just going crazy. He was just coming up to him, dumping on him lightly. Rawr, rawr, rawr. And the man couldn't figure out for the world why the dog was doing it. He'd never done this before. He was oh, he telling the city, he said he waiting there. He said, but he just couldn't be controlled. Well, within five minutes, 
the man started clutching his heart and started collapsing. The dog was trying to tell him that he sensed that something was wrong with him and he didn't even know it. That's why I can believe all these stories in the scripture, not only of a talking snake, but a talking ass. When the man, when the ass sees the angel of Yah, yes, yes, you see something that great, I'm going to start talking too. Look, we got to get out of here. This thing, you don't see what I see. And you keep hitting me. I'm tired of you hitting me. I'm telling you what's right there. And he's going to kill you and he's going to kill me. So y'all might let me talk to you. Yes, I'm going to tell you. Who? It's time to get out of here. Because they talk to us all the time. Yes, the yes, only sir. thing that's lacking is our perceptibility. They know by the eyes is the window of the soul, not just, just man. Look at if you have a pet, look him in the eyes. He know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When I train mine, it's, I just, it's a look. I mean, Just a look. Don't even have to say something sometimes. That communication is very good. We just shut our mind down to it. Yes, sir. You Hallelujah. Mentioned. Yes, sir. Praise God. Barcelona. Also, Moray, um, I just recently saw several times this week on TikTok wild animals coming out and walking up to strangers, stopping traffic because they got a young one that's in distress. You know? So it's all kinds of things. Some animals, even wild animals, they get caught up in, in lines and traps and stuff. When they sense and realize that you're there to help them, they let them help. They let, they let you help them. Yes. And it's countless examples of that interaction going on throughout the world. Even people showing animals they done help rescue and raised up only to go back into the wild and run into that same animal again on different circumstances, and the animals still remember the help that they gave them and still show them kindness and friendly to them and everything else. But then they but they still a wild beast. I, no harm happened. I'll no say it because I saw the same thing when I scrolled it just the other day on my Facebook. It's a it's a place that rescues wild animals from the wild so they can get them back in the wild. But it was a young lady and she was with a gorilla. And she has Treat she give him the treat and he take and he give him. <laughs> she put another in his hand, he put that in his mouth, you know. And she put another and as long as he he just and he wouldn't even look at it so tight and then when you look at it though, he go huh? he communication. Uh -huh. hmm? Yeah. Then she said, and he said. And he turned away. <laughs> he said, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Huh? You ain't got no more. Huh? Huh? Now, do some people like that? Hmm? Now, take, take, take. You ain't got nothing else? Okay. I ain't got nothing to do with you. Yes, they, yes, they, had, a, they had the ability to communicate. And he lost it because he abused it. And he used it to deceive. So now the Almighty said, no, you can't communicate. Look up. Look up, serpent, when you get home. Look it up. That's Because it has various things in there. It's the hissing. It says also whisper. To whisper. Yes. I just seen, it was a while ago somebody showed me this. But inside of the cathedral, the captain inside the cathedral, a man could be, I guess that's sitting in the back of somewhere, but they or they is set up as a as a circle. Yes, if you look but at it, artist, I saw it. I know what you Yeah, the artists mm -hmm. sit out there and they look at here, they're looking at the head of a serpent and the eyes and everything, and and the and the uh, the priests there are speaking to them from out of the mouth of the serpent. Yeah. You think you're looking at Conan the Barbarian? Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I saw that same. I saw that same uh, image. But yes, so yes, adaptation and evolve because evolve the theory of evolution to evolve because all things have an original source, but all things can evolve, but they don't change. 
who they are and go from one species to another species. That that's not that's not possible. The birds, the fowls of the air didn't come out the water. No, no, because some people that's how they teach it. They teach that the birds came out the water, and the scriptures don't say that at all. The script they were always birds that were created to fly in the heavens. And the, whatever was in the water, it was always meant to be in the water. Okay. It didn't come out and become a whole new species of something and change. Do y'all do y'all not believe in the book of Esther? The other house of Israel was saying that was saying that, and I want to know. If you share the same sentiments, do y'all not believe? Do we not believe in the book of Esther? And they want to know, they want to know, well, that's what we're talking about again. Everybody had it right. We believe what they won't believe. Now, if they ask asking me personally or this class, do I believe in the book of Esther? And they won't know if we share the same sentiments of not believing in it. Well, no, I don't share the same sentiments. And I believe in the book of Esther. Yeah. Let me show you why I believe in it. So we go to the book of Isaiah. Yes, sir. Go to the book of Isaiah. And I don't even know what class. It is. I don't even need, need to know Hallelujah. what class it is. Hallelujah. Isaiah. If that's how they get down. That's how they get done. But let me direct this to the book. But not only the book of Esther. I believe that every book that's in the Holy Scriptures is supposed to be in the Holy Scriptures. Hallelujah. Now I have a I have a Bible called the Sefer Bible, and they have all books in it supposedly, even the books that's supposed to be left out. So I have one. I have another copy, man. But the book, see, sometimes we get real advanced. Yeah. And I ain't never said that that one should, because knowledge, even the scriptures say knowledge shall increase. But we get real advanced, and then we forget the basics. Yes, sir. <laughs> or the basics just ain't good enough no more because we're so advanced. Yes, but let me tell you something. At some point in time, everybody gonna have to get back to basics. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what I keep what I kept hearing about three times, and I said, I I better pay attention because this might be the word of the Almighty. This week, three or four times, people totally independent of each other, and guess what their topic was? What's that? And I'm glad this came into my head so I could tell y'all. Guess what the topic was? The topic was about the grid about to falter and go down. The grid. The grid. All this, all this stuff that we used to uh, hear and television pacifying us and all that little stuff about Oh, let me get in my car and go and see grandma. Let me put it in my GPS. Like you don't know where grandma lives. Right. <laughs> Men that totally don't even know each other, totally on the show, didn't even, are not connected in any way. I heard four programs and they're talking about the collapse in the not so distant future of the grid. Mm. That means stores in peril. Mm -hmm. hmm? The one that was even a brother because he said he was giving courses out in Evanston because he worked for and in conjunction with Homeland Security. Mm. So he have an inside track. So he's chatting on the wire. And he said he ain't even want nobody to pay for it. He trying to do it for free because he knows what's on the horizon. Because you're talking about stores not meeting the needs of people. You're talking about chaos. So he said these camps, they are real that people 
been talking about for years because it's been for years, right. even before we discovered it. Right. They're very real. And he said it, you can plan. And he said the camps are not for the people that stay out. Like in the neighborhood we know in our city. He said they're for the inner city. And he said you can plan on spending no less in the concentration camp, no less than two weeks. And wrap your head around spending months in the camp. Now, there you go, because that's your own, that's your only other alternative is to do what a lot of people have been doing, and that's to get back to the land and go somewhere and try to forge a life for yourself. That's why, see, that's why I said everything ain't about hatred, everything ain't about they racist. I travel the border of Harrison, Ohio, and Indiana. <laughs> and I know why them people love living where they live. Yes, sir. Because it's less what they call intrusive. No government. You might see in four or five hours, you might see one sheriff car come by there. But they get to live how they want to live. And they're right there by the river. They can go out and fish. Believe you me, they go in the woods and they go hunt. They got everything and they got farms. So I, I, I'll be driving. I say, man, this is bigger than they just don't like no black folk. They don't want nobody encouraging on their way of life they have carved out. And it's a way of life in which they can live. See? Huh? Because we want to be honest. Come on now. What are we going to do if tomorrow we wake up and they say, can't go to the store? It ain't got nothing. Huh? What are we going to do? You better. First thing you better do is pray. And, and beseech y'all. And ask y'all to help God. That's the first thing you better do. Yes, sir. You buy all bullets you want to. You're going to run out pretty soon. Or <laughs> yes, well, somebody else got more bullets than you. You up there talking about pop. Pop. And they come by. I just put that thing down. Okay. No. No. We, we do it all. The righteous should do. And that's great. That's right. Hallelujah. And this ain't no holy police. That's right. And as the Almighty. Again, if we believe that he is El Shaddai, to be with us. And we believe in his love, ask him to guide us. And show us what we need to do. Because you're not going to know what to do. You're not going to know the move to make. Hmm? Huh? This the Sabbath day, brother Abraham. Why are you bringing us down? I see that on some of y'all's faces. Well, hmm? Is what we need to consider. Hmm? I've been grabbing wood like I can. Hmm? Make me some fires. Make me some fire. Yes, sir. Hmm? And we will talk about, but there's many things we can do. Yeah. Hmm? Because the world is a heartbeat from being interrupted. We saw with COVID. Yes, sir. Yep, we still didn't learn from that. <coughs> we saw with 9 11. Yep, we still didn't learn from that. As the scripture says, something the Almighty does, he does for correction. Something he does for his mercy. Mm. He's trying to send us a message. Won't you get prepared? Oh, yeah. Hmm? Hmm? This is the plant, this is the growing season, isn't it? Yes, it is. In the growing season, yes, we're a little bit behind. I'm a little bit behind. And seeds should be in the earth. Gardens. And you don't need land. Get your pots. If you got this, some pots. Huh? And you can go out and, and touch something that you don't have to buy from nobody else. That's better than what you're buying in the store. I don't even care if it's vegetables. They stuff in, the vegetables is tainted too. 
Only way you know it's not tainted is if your hands done got it. Huh? So you better believe that's where I'll be tomorrow, y'all for you. From far as the day. I'm getting the seeds in the ground. Hmm? But the book, let's get back to Esther. Why do I accept Esther? Isaiah 34 and 16. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. Seek ye out the book of Yahweh and read it. And this is the book of Yah. Hallelujah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Judges, Joshua. Joshua. This is the book of Yah. Seek ye out the book of Yah and what? And read. And read it. Not look at it. Not put it on the shelf. <laughs> not one of these should fail. And I haven't seen one on the fail me when I read it and apply it. Hallelujah. None shall want her mate. I haven't seen one of them that need a mate. Yes, I do study and have a strong course in that, but I still can read and the word of Yah. He's able to convey his message if we let go and my sister said there and let y'all. Hallelujah. Sometimes we won't read the word of y'all, but we won't put ourselves before the Almighty. And not you per se, other, but that's why people can say such thing. He was a man. That's you putting that there. Huh? But as I said, his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. His way is higher than our ways. Not picking on young man. That's what you're not the only one. That's what a lot of people say. I, I can't read the Bible. I'm talking servants and talking jackasses. Yes. But when we broke it down, it we understand that we're communicating with them every day. Huh? I mean, and, and this is the one I miss. Because it ain't like this fictitious. There have been many men that have parents. And they train their parents to what? Talk. Talk. Two o'clock. Huh? He told me. Huh? Yeah. I know somebody that has some. I know a lady in the neighborhood mind they have some. And she in the daytime she got to throw a cloth over. Them. So they'd be quiet. Because you come in the house, they hear her talk, they might say something that she said. So she throw a cloth over, yeah. over the cage. Because they can talk. Yeah, make it dark. Just... It's nighttime. Go to sleep. <laughs> but they be talking. <laughs> yeah. She so ain't so far for the chapter. I'll listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. I know you can teach a monkey how to do kung fu. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. Not one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it had commanded. And why do we have a book like we have it? So Yahweh now commanded. Because undoubtedly, yes, it's millions of books. It's books named in this Holy Scripture that's not in the canon. But why are they not in the canon? Not because Shakespeare. Not because of King James. They're not canonized. They weren't canonized through the work of men. The Spirit of Yahweh didn't move them to canonize them because he didn't find them that important what we're going to learn from the book of Nathan that we don't already know that's important about David's life oh God. what we're going to learn in the book of Gad that we don't already know that's not important about David's life we got all of it right here the books we have and many people ain't even understanding that right hmm? what I need with the book of Enoch that Genesis ain't already telling me other than what's contrary, well, Enoch went. 
but he came back. Well, that's not what the Holy Spirit should say. Yeah. Holy Spirit say he left and said he was not. So we have to even monitor, like I said. Huh? Yes, sir. For my mouth, it had what? Commanded. And his what? Spirit. His spirit. It had gathered them. And he had cast a lot for them. And his hand had divided it unto them by the line. That's why some people going to tell you, sometimes Muslims, they go, you don't have original Torah. I say, well, great. If you know I don't have the original Torah, then you do have the original Torah. Can I see it, please? Mm. That's why I told my brother when he was talking about the camel. Well, show it. Don't just tell me. Because you can tell me I don't have the original Torah. Then undoubtedly, you have a copy of the original Torah that you should be able to place in front of me and say, Brother Aaron, this is why I say you don't have the original Torah. But guess what? You can't. Because when I open up the Quran, guess what it's going to do? It's going to verify most for me to go back to what's right here. To the book. Oh, children of Israel, sure too. Remember the favor we have bestowed upon you. How we raised you up among all the other nations. How we gave you Musa and the law and the commandments. The whole sure too is dedicated to the children of Israel. Hmm? Yeah, you tell me we don't have original. If I don't have original Torah, then your Quran ain't original. At all. <laughs> read, read that again. And he had cast the lot for them, and his hand had divided it unto them by line. King James didn't do this of his own will. The Almighty worked through King James. Oh yeah. Because he said he ruled in the kingdom of men. Just like he worked with King Cyrus. Just like he worked through King Darius. Just like he worked through King Xerxes. Just like, and I can go Nebuchadnezzar. I can go on and on and on. Yes. They shall, they shall possess it forever. From generation to generation. We supposed to have. dwell therein. This the mercy of Yah. We supposed to have a scripture. Oh, Yah. There's not supposed to be a house with Israel in it that don't have the word of Yah. Hallelujah. We grew up with Bibles. Center table. Come in the house. Center table. And read it from generation. And you read in it. And then they're going to see you read in it. And when they see you read it and, and commit it to it, then they should put it in their mind. Man, let me get let me get that. Let me see what it is. Let me read it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what he meant. They supposed to possess it forever. Oh, From one generation to, to another death. generation. And he ain't talking about just 40 years. He said they should dwell. They should dwell. You supposed to dwell in it. Live in this book. Let it consume you. Oh, and people want to know why Alicia could recite scriptures off the top of the head. Because yes, he started letting it consume him. Oh, yeah. Every day. I don't know how many times a day. Sure, it's going to get put into the memory bank. And people marvel at it. The only reason why you marveling at it is because you don't read. You don't study. I think you say I for now. Good. Where to say that? Oh. It's in there. <laughs> the Lord said, cast your burdens upon me and I'll free your hands of all heavy weights. I said, where that's at in there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Let me help you. It's in the, it's in the book of Papyrus. Yeah, that's probably it, the book of Papyrus. Sir, there is no book of Papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? We supposed to this supposed to be a part of our life, our daily routine. And that's what I meant earlier. We all sin, huh? Huh? We all violate some kind of way. Because I don't even make it a part of my daily routine. But let me stop lying. Cause let me tell you what I did. 
I can go right here. I got about four, five, six different Bible applications on this phone. Hebrew, English. I have the concordance on here. Hmm? But that's what it's starting to become. Because we're talking about y'all being our life and the length of our days. Then how can you go through your days and not lay your eyes on the word of Yah? Oh, yeah. hmm? So, if the spirit of Yah gathered these books, if the spirit of Yah command, if His mouth commanded these books, then who saw fit for the book of Esther to be in the scripture? Yeah. The same one that saw fit for the book of Deuteronomy to be in the scriptures. Yes, sir. Or Leviticus to be in the scriptures. Or Numbers to be in the scriptures. Because there's great wisdom in the book of Esther. Yes, yes it, is. it is. If you let it speak to you. Yes. Huh? We found great wisdom. Hallelujah. In the book of Esther. Well, it ain't the book of Yah because it don't have his name. Huh? I know what I know what the I know what it is. That's what I say. Ain't, it, ain't no spring dummy. Then heard these things. It's great wisdom in the book of the songs of song. Shir Shirin. If you know how to gleam it. And the Almighty's name ain't in there. But it found its way in the book, in the Bible. That should be in all our hands. Hmm? Yes, we found hmm, that we had Christmas hmm? and when I say Christmas I'm just talking about the concept before Christmas okay. yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. that we get two and not one day okay. what we talked about the other night people huh, don't even know the almighty huh uh -huh. huh we, that if we acquaint ourselves and make this a joy to us that the Almighty revealed it to, man, come our 12 months, we should be teaming. The yes, kids sir. should be happy like yes, the sir. like the other kids happy in oh, December. Yes, our sir. kids should be happy. Yes, sir. Even happier. They should go to school. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Hey, kids be like, what, what are you so happy about? Mm -hmm. Man, two days. Yes, Two days. Yeah, I'm going to get some presents one day. And then the next day, I'm going to get some presents. Because we celebrating our yacht. The kid, then the kids will be like, ooh, they go home. Ooh, ooh. Y'all can now, he got, he getting presents two days. Why we can pray on one day? And then your kids won't be feeling like they missing out on something. All right. Huh? The new moon. We should be happy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's funny, Elder. We came, I went home and I said, man, I, I'm going to scroll through my phone to see some things. And so I got on the website, our brother in the website, and it said, the new moon. And lo and behold, guess who was on there? Huh? What religion? That's what I was going to guess, oh, but I didn't know. <laughs> He was teaching the new woman. Oh, yeah, I've seen that over there. And he said, What? He said, if we don't glorify. If we don't. We huh? Don't. Huh? <laughs> Same thing we had discussed that night. Oh, yeah. huh? If we ain't happy about it. All right. If it don't mean nothing to us. All right. If we ain't making a big deal yeah, out of it. Yes, sir. Because that's his opening decalogue when he started talking about the new moon. Oh, that's yeah. his opening. What does it mean to Israel? And if it don't mean much to us, it don't mean nothing to nobody. Huh? Don't mean nothing. And he would point out one particular, I hope Elder don't get mad at me, but he pointed out one particular one because it was commendable. Yeah. He said, look how much it means to Israel. Look how beautiful Elder. He said, he done came here to drop off some lemonade and some vittles, <laughs> and his wife ain't even feeling good. He said, but he had to come and drop it off, and then he went back home to be and take care of his lovely wife. 
And he said, ain't that just commendable? Ain't that beautiful? And everybody just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he had to come to class and make that piss stop for the new moon and honor y'all. Because that's what it means to him. Hmm? I have a job. have a job, I guess. They ain't called me in for two weeks. I picked up a little work in the evening. But I was like, boy, they ain't called me in for two weeks. And then the other night came. I said, I hope they don't send a message talking about I'm going to call to come in this evening. Okay. My answer is, eh. and if it make a problem, then I just won't have that job in the evening. Because you ain't supposed to be two weeks, and then I'm supposed to pick you over okay. the Almighty. Yes, no, sir. I'm going to pick that. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to be like David. You know I have never failed. Hello. Huh? He said, you know, I ain't never failed to sit with the king and celebrate the new moon. I've never failed. Huh? When other people around us is making hoopla about stuff that they can't even produce the existence of. Hmm? Our new year should be teaming. Yes. Huh? Yes, and it's the real New Year. All over the city. Okay. Yes, they shooting, shooting through your windows, shooting through your cars. Okay. Got your half scared. You think you in Beirut or something, laying on the floor at 12 midnight. And then we just, yeah. the hand will come and grab a couple little glass of things in the <laughs> hand wheel and go home. Right. We wonder if we can celebrate. Right. Hmm? Yes, sir. Huh? That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. You know I know y'all doubting me out now. <laughs> one, right. Huh? Well, what does it mean? Because, like I said, that was his opening dialogue. Right. Or decalogue. Hmm? If we don't do it, mm -hmm. hmm? nobody else is going to do it. Is going to do it. At all. We the only one praise we are. And that's why. It's a great thing. Hallelujah. Huh? I look forward to them. Hallelujah. From 25th day, brothers, sisters, they look. What day is this? 24. What day is this? 20. They send out messages. You see anything? You see anything? Y'all see anything? It's going to be early. <laughs> it's going to get there. Hmm? Hmm? So all this, what does it mean? So in the book of Esther, we have a wealth. It's here because it has knowledge. It has wisdom. It has understanding. That we can glean from the pages. Huh? Yes, sir. Jimmy, I ain't picking on you, sisters. Can I point out something, though? I'm not talking about it, so it ain't about y'all. But let's go to Esther. Yes, sir. Let's see something. Hmm? They can give us understanding. But like I said, we got a long way to go. The whole family got a long way to go. The men, women, yes, sir. children, yes, sir. old and young. Yes, sir. We got a whole long way to go. Yes, we do. Are we talking about we ready for the coming of the Almighty? Okay. I know just how much we not ready. Okay. Hmm? All the people running around, I'm ready. He come today. We ain't going nowhere. Huh? I'm going down and put my money on a very small number of folk, including me, that will perish because we ain't ready. This ain't the romanticism. This ain't the TV kind of mind that we got. No, sir. Hmm? And I'm not talking just simply law. I'm talking about a total change in how we just look at life and live life. You got that, sir? Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. First chapter. That's the chapter one. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Sisters. Not y'all, like I said, but some women, they might get mad at this. 
But they didn't mean too much. And then them, them songs. But and getting too much of that Gloria Hemmerstein, women live stuff. Watch this though. Start reading one. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And let's read the first chapter. We got time. Okay. Why are we rushing? Yeah, we got plenty of time. Hallelujah. Esther chapter one, verse one. Now it came to pass in the days of uh, now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This Ahasuerus, which reigned from India, he reigned from India, even unto Ethiopia, all the way back to what's known today as Ethiopia, Kush, or modern day Africa. Over a hundred and seven, over a hundred and seven and twenty print provinces made the United States look like chump change. 127 provinces. Go ahead. That in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and me, and nobles, the nobles and princes of the province being before him. So he just throw part for no reason at all, just because he can. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty, many days, even a hundred and four score days. He threw a party that lasted for a hundred and eighty days. Mm. And when the days were expired, they're spending money. The king made a feast unto all the people that was present in Shushan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where, where were white, green, and blue hanging, fastened with cords of linen, of fine linen, and purple to silver rings, and pillars of marble. The beat, the beaten, the beds the were beds of gold and silver. Were of gold and silver upon, upon the pavement painting. of red, blue, and white, huh? Long before the red, white, and blue of America, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, people were using these colors. Yeah. Hmm? Thank you. Yeah. They were using these colors. Guess what? These same colors found in the temple: scarlet, white, linen, and blue. Huh? They mean something. Hmm? And black marble. And they gave them drinking vessels of gold. The vessels being diverse one from another. And pour royal wine in abundance. Not cheap wine. Royal wine. Yeah, not that, that Irish roll or whatever they call it. Huh? Royal wine. Good stuff. According to the state of the king. It was king approved. And the drinking was according to the law. Hmm? Well, none did compel. If you don't need, if you don't want to drink, don't drink. Hmm? But if you drink, have that. They had a law. Hmm? For the king, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. I just want y'all to have a good time. Hmm. Be free uninhibited and just party what's your thing what's your pleasure hmm? and vashti the queen she made a feast for the women so she threw her own feast the right. fellas doing their thing she said i'm gonna throw one at the queen for the woman the women the ladies hmm? it's ladies night <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm going to throw one in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. Hmm? And on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was married with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bithra, Abagatha, Zethar, Karkos, seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus, the king. He commanded them to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal 
and no, not to drink. <laughs> Bring that crown. Not, not, not the little couch, little bag with the bottle. No, that's not the crown world. <laughs> hey, hey, you got to throw that stuff in there because it's remarkable what people was crown yes, royal in the scriptures. That's why I drink crown royal. Drink it. No, we talking about when she came in, he wanted her to have the crown, her crown on her head. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what he wanted her to have. So he commanded that they bring the queen in before him with the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty. Huh? He want to show off now. This is vanity. For she was fair to look on. And that's what he wanted. Huh? Huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Sisters? Y'all starting to get anything from this? Hmm? Sure. <laughs> you know? Let me help you. Let me help you. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, your man just needs somebody. Especially if you look like something. Mm -hmm. He just wants to show, take you out and, and, and brag. These little single buddies, he wants to just take you out and have you on his arm. He don't want you to do much. He just wants you to be is it fall on him. Build, play to his ego. Rub on the little chest that he don't have. Rub on the little arm that muscles he don't have. Call him Big Daddy while his buddy's sitting there and they know they're going home looking at each other or going home all alone. You just make him look feel like a king. And that's all he wants you to do. Huh? That's all. Huh? Don't be arguing with him and showing out on him. Be little in him. Huh? And it's what he wanted. <laughs> but what happened when he asked for this? But Queen Vashti hmm? refused, refused to come at the king's command uh -oh. by his chamberlain. Oh, I right, tell me what to do. Why don't he come in here? Mm. See, if he want me that way, come see me. Mm. Hmm? Therefore, was the king very wrong? And his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men. See, went against their nature. And the nature of being a king. Hmm? Then so, the, yes. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times. For so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next, and the next unto him was Corsina, Sithar, Admatha, Tarshish, Merez, Marcina, and, and Mimukan, the seven princes of Persia and me. Just think, I'm the king. I'm sitting on the throne, having a good time, feeling good. I call for my lady. She bad. I said, man, watch my woman when she coming here. Me and my woman like this. She stand by me. She good to me. She support me. She with me in all my endeavors. She don't give me no static. My woman, boy, she not only physically cold, she, she just everything. Go tell her to come here. I want them to see my pride and joy. And he's sitting there and he all teased out. And he got word, come back, he said, man, she ain't coming nowhere. That's what she told me to tell you. He said, uh, and now he's looking at his fellow. They sitting there because they looking at him. And he's looking at them. And they like, yeah, what, 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 where the woman that you been bragging on? <laughs> hmm? He feel this small. Mm -hmm. He feel this small. Because huh? that's what this is telling you. Them, all the princes sitting there that heard him brag about this woman. The seven princes of Persia and me. But now she just showed him up. We mm -hmm. saw the face. We saw the king's face. And we set the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen fasting according to law? When they saw the hurt, disappointment, huh? They said, oh, she done, look what she done did to the king. She done offended the king. Huh? What should be done with such a case? Hmm? Because after all, that is the queen. Mm -hmm. What do you do to the queen? According to the law. Huh? 
Because she has not performed. Because she has what? Not performed. Huh? Have not yeah. performed the commandment of the king of Osiris by the many, chamberlain. I don't know how many subscribers we done lost after this. <laughs> huh? And the Mukan answered before the king and said, answered before the king and the princes, Vasti the queen have not done have not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the province of King Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women. This ain't going to stay in the palace. This disrespect going to get out. And it's going to go to all women in your kingdom. And they're going to start, you're going to have hell. Because they're going to start doing this in their own homes with their own husbands. When it shall be appointed, the king, so the king commanded Majesty the queen to be brought in before him, that she came not. They said, when that get out, watch it. Watch it. Likewise, shall the ladies of Persia and me say this day unto all the king's princes which have heard of such deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much what? Contempt, Contempt and wrath. And, wrath. and that's the last thing you need in the relationship. Yes, sir. Is contempt for one another. When you start getting contempt for one another, you got some problems. And if there's wrath in the relationship, you got some serious problems. So if there's both in the relationship, you got hell. If the relationship is governed no longer by love and respect, but by contempt and wrath, it's over. You say, hey, it's a raps. Huh? It's a raps. Huh? You want a kingdom like that? Where well, that's in every household? Or the majority of households? Hmm? We ain't talking about making nobody no making the women no slaves. But we talking about men as a certain way of conduct. Because hmm? if he a wise man, he know the way of conduct with his woman. Why well, take my woman out and make her look like, like she's just a dog? Next thing I know, if that's how she valued in my eyes, next thing I know, I go out and creep off somewhere to battle or something. Somebody else come and be talking to all kind of 14 care crazy. Because that's how I esteem it. So why should they treat it any more respect than what I do? Right. It's a way in which we conduct ourselves with each other. Hmm? This is just one of the nuggets of wisdom. Hmm? And it's more it's a whole lot more. So yes, the book have a place. The book of Esther, for me, Hallelujah. have its place right here in the scriptures, right just like it is. Yes, sir. It just depends on what you can get out of it. Because the Almighty wanted it. Because it's useful. Because the Almighty don't do nothing in vain. Hmm? Any comment on that? Yeah. Don't nobody else find any good in it, then that's all right. They don't have to teach. They don't deal with it. So in the book of Ruth, we don't have thus said y'all that, do it. You know what? I don't think I don't think it does. I don't think it does. 
Don't say does say if y'all know. That's just another story. That's an excellent point, brother. Yeah. Hmm? I, if, to my recollection, so, so do they I feel the same way about the book of Ruth? I can't think of a scripture that does, but we know it's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in the book of Ruth. So do they disregard or do they say, nah, that is because that's about our daddy David? And, that, and it gives his blood lineage in the end of that book. But other than that, it don't say does save God in there at all. That I would have seen, unless I missed it. I can't recollect it. Hmm? But again, as Isaiah said, I believe every book that's here. Hallelujah. It's supposed to be here. Every word. It's supposed to be here. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah. When the nations launch the first nuclear bomb, will that be the fulfillment? Of the Gentiles. Also, will fire and brimstone rain down before or after this period? I'm not sure what one means by fulfillment of the Gentiles. If they would like to write an amendment to this question. Would that be the fulfillment of the Gentiles? If you could bring some clarity to the question, then perhaps I will be able to assess it and give you a proper answer. So if you could do that for me, pray the demon, and then I'll come back, y'all's will, with an answer, hopefully. When Abraham left Egypt, they gave him many things when leaving. Let me read that properly. When Abraham left Egypt, they gave him many things when leaving. When Hagar left Abraham, she got only water. Was that unjust giving them few things to go in the wilderness? Well, let's see. Let's go to Genesis. Hmm? Genesis. Hallelujah. And like I said, I heard a minister say that this is why Christ was even greater than Abraham. Mm. Uh -huh. One of Abraham's flaws was that he was a deadbeat dad. Mm. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, he's talking about. He's, you gotta prove that. You talking about speaking some, some great words? Yeah, they, huh? they understand. Sure. And he and he hold a mega church. The person I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They just now this. Yeah, they say but they'd be dad. Yeah. He didn't take care of him. Right. Hmm. Genesis chapter 21. Line upon line. Genesis chapter 21. Hmm? Sorry, where? Nine. Hmm? Is where one would think we should start. Right? Right. But hold this. See? Because y'all might always talk about the full picture. <laughs> Yes, sir. So hold this, and we're going to start it. 15. 15. And we're going to walk a little bit. Y'all don't mind walking. Y'all tired. Genesis like chapter tired. 15. Genesis chapter 15. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of Yahweh came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. 
And Abram said, Yahweh Elohim, what would thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Wittgenstein scripture. Man had no great aspiration than to leave an heir, to leave a seed on this earth, namely a son. It brought him great joy. And so that's what he told the Almighty. I have many things, and you give me many things. I believe you, my shield, and I believe you, my exceedingly great reward, because you have showed it to me. But, Father, I have nobody to leave it to. I have no inheritance. Hmm? Hmm? So all your life, done amass many things, and you have nobody to leave it to. You have spent 30 years paying off a house huh? and nobody to leave it to. Huh? City state just come take it away. That's insane. Hmm? I mean, yes. I don't want to the word video. Um, is that considered like, uh, could that be considered the desires of the, uh, thank you. Um, I'll honor for the word of the guy. Could that be considered like the desires of his heart? Because maybe he, at one point he probably just considered that maybe Sarah couldn't have children and he accepted that. Yes. But still, sure. you know, he might not have addressed it to her, but he, you yes. know. Yes, sure was the desire of his heart. Okay, because I know in Psalms they talk about Yah will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. You know, when you commit yourself to him and things like that. So sure, was, and sure, yes, yeah, sure was the desire of his heart. Hallelujah. And it's not, and that's not something bad because not only was right. the desire of his heart, but it was a natural inclination. Okay. Because right. again, see, this is where you walk through. That's why I said we don't walk. Mm -hmm. What the Almighty say when He made man? I want Him to be what? Fruitful. Right. Yeah. Multiply. Mm -hmm. And replenish the earth. Bring forth. Okay. Huh? So that's what that's what drive a man. Again, that's what we have to do. As older men, that's what we have to do when we part of the life of our son. Yes, sir. Because even if they're like, oh, no, nah, I ain't in the women. I ain't trying to lose no woman right now. I ain't in. Man, you a boy. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's you trying to turn to a man. Yes. And I've been where you've been. Yes. And the right one come along yes. and blow on your ear. Yes. All this stuff you talking to me about you ain't thinking about no woman and no girl. All yes. that is out the window. Yes, sir. And the next thing I know, you coming home talking about daddy, can I tell you something? Yeah, what, what's up? <laughs> can we make the one room back to a nursery? What was it, a nursery what? Next? No. Uh, you ain't met her yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what you talking, son? Good. The girl I know, uh, you ain't met her. I know what well, she pregnant. Because I understand the natural, natural inclination. Hmm? Hmm? Baby girl. I kid a lot. But let me tell you something. I'm lightweight scared to death. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I call a baby girl a term of endearment. But she ain't so much a baby no more. Nope. She running around talking about boys. He look good and he look like them. <laughs> <laughs> then they want to know where she can go by herself. She can't go nowhere <laughs> by herself. <laughs> by herself. <laughs> she have a state test that she got to go take. Not to get all the stuff. A state test, and guess who's gonna be right there? I think about drawing off, go back home. I ain't drawing off and going nowhere. I'm sitting right in the parking lot. Lunch and everything. Every, everything. All day. She come out the door, and, and the guy fall even smiling at his this problem. Rainbow. <laughs> no, because let me tell you something, and now I'm be sure let me tell you something. Because when we leave them off the chain, yes, sir. and they are young, yes, sir. there's no guarantee they can discipline themselves. Yes. As Solomon said, who can take fire 
in his bosom and not get burned. We still can't fool with it and we know that. And most of us still can't fool with it. Huh? That's right. I'm 52 years old. Huh? And the sweet thing I'll tell you. He all messed up. Huh? And you're supposed to be mature. Me, you're supposed to be mature. Hmm? Because this, but is it bad? No, it's in the original nature. That's why the Almighty give a laws to help govern. Because he noticed in the nature. So now there's laws. That's what all those law, moral law, moral code, that's what they for. Mm -hmm. hmm? You need them. Look, I got some fine, I mean fine third cousin. That's a good gracious. That's a good gracious. Huh? That's what that's why I'm watching it go long. Yes, sir. I had some uncles. I done had some uncles had some beautiful. I mean beautiful. Because they all went wild. Beautiful women in their life. Huh? I said, boy, unk boy. Especially when I didn't know a lot, unk, he bad. Uncle Flair. Mm. And I'm saying that because I'm looking at her like, ooh. Mm. That's why they're lost. Mm. Creator know more, way more than we know. Hallelujah. Right. Have far more foresight than what we have. Yes, sir. Hmm? So that's why I tell them, no. Hmm? He, he come out of work right there, he just be smiling. <laughs> when I pick him up, yeah. huh? little older woman came out. He just smiling the other day. I said, "Boy, that, that lady put you. You look like you've been a washing machine." Boy, that old woman put you in such. She put something on me, but he just smiling. <laughs> he just smiling. <laughs> you like you've been washed with time. Boy, come on, let's read, bro. So yes, yes, Father Abraham wanted a baby. Okay. Huh? That's gonna kick in. That's your natural and you can't fight it. Right. Yeah. That's why men for boys, women for girls, because the woman knows the girl's inclination. The man knows the son, the boy's inclination. So it's certain things a boy, a young man just need a man in his life yes. to help him deal with. And there's certain things a young woman just need a woman in her life to help her deal with. Yes, sir. Because it's natural. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 15, verse 3. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And the one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels as you said, shall be thy heir. So you, you, you got it. Huh? He's given up. Yeah. He 70 years, yeah. 75 years, 90 years old. Yeah. Yeah. We've been trying. Hey, it ain't about to happen. Yeah, like a lot of people. <laughs> it ain't about to happen. Yes, huh? Mm -hmm. Then y'all might have to tell him, no, I got plans. Yes, sir. You giving up on yourself, but I ain't giving up on you. Right. Huh? You don't think it can happen, but I'm going to show you why I call myself and allow you to call me El Shaddai. Yes, sir. The Almighty yes, sir. Elohim. Yes, sir. I'm going to allow you to see. Why you call me that? Hmm? Sir, this thing is going to happen to you. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in Yahweh and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, 
I am Yahweh Boy, that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees. And we can get that faith. Yeah, all right. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. I tell you right now, I sure don't have it. Yes. Huh? Yes. I said this, I, I need a sign. <laughs> Father, I know I need you to do something. Father, yeah, I know you with me, but boy, they getting on my I need you to strike them down. If you if you really with me, just strike them down right now. Then I believe. I, I gotta strike them down for you to know that I'm with you. Yeah, I huh? What that we need that faith, huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, yeah. Sir. Hmm? Said he believed. Mm. No evidence. Right. No hard proof. Okay. Right. Nothing tangible. Right. Man just walked away from the conversation and said, he said it. It's going to happen. All right. I believe it. Huh? Yes, and he kind of created said, I love that so much. Boy, that's, I'm going to count that as righteousness. Yeah. That's part of that man's righteousness. Right. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Huh? Hallelujah. That he just believe I told him. He gonna have an air. <laughs> hmm? Let's go over to 16. Let's appear in 16. Start at verse 1. Hallelujah. Now Sarah, Abraham, Abram's wife, bear him no children. Mm -hmm. And she and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian named Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now. Yahweh have restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. Perhaps I may obtain children by her. Ah, uh, because that must be what he means. See, that men. That's the mind. That's all mine. That's all mine and men. We've been we've been long with this, and ain't no child never came. So Pride, it, it, he must mean that that's what this handmaid, this young girl, that's what she's here for. She's here to bear the child that he had promised you to have. Because you know I can't do that now. Hmm? So this is what he must be talking about. Go in unto her that I may attain children by her. So Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her Egyptian maid, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Yes, he didn't just sleep with her. She gave him to her to become a wife. Maybe in the sense of a concubine, because she didn't go through the full ceremony like she did when she married but nevertheless she was his wife because there were no mistresses there were no this just somebody i hooked up with and she pregnant no it had to be still on the righteous way and the only way that's done the only thing that's recognized in the sight of the almighty is the marriage union so she gave him to be her wife let's go um, and he went in unto Hagar, and she could see. That's when he went in unto her. Mm -hmm. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. She started getting fun. Young girl. Mm -hmm. Older woman. Mm -hmm. Older woman that can't have no children. Mm -hmm. And look at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh? I know this. I don't know it because I ain't in, I ain't did this. <laughs> <laughs> but I have family members where some of my uncles went out, got a younger girl, oh, yeah. hmm? beautiful wife, been married to all that time. Yeah, they, they became attention hmm? young girl she called he bolt out the door right. he bolt out the door right. wife he done have four years she called one and come back he come back maybe the next day mm -hmm. becomes that 
those dynamics in there. So that's why she said the mistress or her Sarah, she was despised in Hagar's eye. And Sarah said unto Abram, Thou art responsible for this outrageous injury. The only argument you're going to see them two have in these scriptures. Because this is an argument. It is an argument. Mm -hmm. It's conflict. And so now, Mother Sarah says, you're responsible for this. Hmm? I've given my I've given my maid into thy bosom. <laughs> and when she saw that she had conceived I was despised in her eyes. Yahweh judged between me and thee. And Abram said unto Sarah, wasn't a very long argument. Mean, he said unto Sarah, Behold, your maid is in your hands. You gave her to me. And she belonged to you. You, her mistress. Master, but feminine sense, you, her mistress. You have power over her. And you gave her to me. I put her in your hands. Due to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarah afflicted her, so Sarah said, okay, you going to put it in my hand? I'm going to show it, and I'm going to show the young thing what this old thing <laughs> is doing. I'm, 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 I'm about to go outside. I've been around the block. She ain't been in the places I've been. So I got something for her. Huh? I, I see how young she is when I run her to death. Go over there. Get that. Uh-uh. Go over there. Do that. Huh? She started Flicking her. Hmm? And these words mean just what they mean. Don't let nobody, they don't mean she afflicted. Yes, she did. That's the narrative. <laughs> she afflicted her so much that what? She, she fled, fled from her face. Said, I got to get away from this woman. She crazy. Huh? And the angel, so this is the first time that she leaves. It's not Abram's fault. He had nothing to do with it. Huh? His wife drive away. Mother Sarah drive away. That she go and she run. So much that the angel of Yah, the presence of Yah, found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness. That time she ran and didn't get nothing from nobody. She just got out of there. No pardon gifts. Huh? Yeah. Ran into the wilderness. Found by a fountain in the way of sure. And he said unto Hagar, Sarah made, whence came thou? And where are you going? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. Not from my master. Because hmm? hmm? that's not even Abraham's character. He was learning to love this girl. Huh? Never to the level that he loved Sarah. She was never going to compete. In his eyes, she was never going to be able to compete with Sarah. Hello. If that's the case, he would have kicked Sarah to the curb years ago. She could never take the place of Sarah. Huh? So she wasn't running from him. She was running from the problem that she had with Mother Sarah. So the angel said to her, well, you can't run. Huh? Return to your mistress. And submit yourself under her hand. Humble yourself. Stop going in there thinking that you run everything. Because that's what's causing the problems. The lady will accept you. You have a child. The woman ain't wicked and evil. But you have to check yourself. You're creating a problem. Your attitude. Huh? Huh? Sad, ah. All that uh, <laughs> huh? go back, submit thyself under her hand. And the angel Yah said to her, I will multiply your seed. He wants her to know, look, if you go back, <laughs> submit yourself. You have a your seed it that you carry, it have a great future. It have a great future. Let me tell you the future it has. The angel of Yah said on there, I will multiply your seed. What? Exceedingly. Hmm? Then it shall not be numbered for multitude. Almost sound like the children of Israel, don't it? Yes. Huh? Huh? That was the promise Y'all talked to Abraham's seed. Yes, huh? And Ishmael is Abraham's seed. It's his seed. Yeah. 
And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, you are with child, and you'll bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael. Yeah, she's pregnant. Yeah, she ran, she's pregnant. Yeah. And you should call his name Ish. That's what made the affliction all the more greater. A lot of y'all said, y'all been pregnant, huh? And you have to work hard. Somebody tell you what to do while you're pregnant. You're already getting tired. Huh? Back hurt, beat hurt, huh? And nobody, and, and a person is able to tell you what to do and they won't let you rest. You try to sit down for a moment because catch, catch your breath. Uh-uh, get up. Huh? I was watching uh, Shaka Zulu. And it was the scene of the of Nandi when he was in the crawl. And that's what was happening with her. He was running her death and she was a child. And one day she, he ran it and she just passed out because the heat and everything, exhaustion, she just passed out. That's what he's saying. He said, so the angel said, man, you're pregnant with a child. The child is by Father Abraham. Let me tell you something. Y'all love Father Abraham so much that this child going to be all right. See, it's already written in the cards. Yes, it is. No matter what nobody think they can do to him. Y'all love Father Abraham so much that his seed that come from him have some clout with the Almighty. And I tell you, this child is going to be okay. Hmm? So call him Ishmael because Yah has heard your affliction. But let me tell you something about your child. His characteristics. You hear this son? You hear about the lion type man? Well, he's not, it don't describe him as a lion type man, but it is going to tell you about the characteristic of Ishmael. He said, your son will be a wild man. As he grows up, he's going to be wild. His hand will be against every man. Now, this ain't fictitious. Right. Huh? See, this is what I call bringing practicality. How many children have you ever known to grow up in adverse situations? Anybody raise their hand? And it make them a lot more aggressive than other children around them. With other children around him that may have favorable conditions, a little more docile, because his conditions of growing up is not so favorable, he's a lot more aggressive. Because the life that's been given to him has led him to be that way. I got to do it like this. I got to be aggressive because nobody has cuddled me. Nobody of this. So that's what he means by he's a wild man. He has the, because as the story play out, you're going to see why. Y'all, it's about man. time for me to go home. He's going to be a wild man. He's going to be a wild man. Because y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah, we do. Huh? He's going to be a wild man. But it's not just that he won't be against everybody. That's in his nature because that's, and that's why we're reading all this, because you'll see it when he comes into fruition. And he's growing up. His conditions are going to make him where he's aggressive like that. Because many times when people are like that and you meet them, you be like, man, you're so aggressive. Boy, I love you, but you're so, you so good. And you have to learn where they came from. Well, this is how I grew up. In my family, I had to be like this. Some people don't like you doing things for them. Why? Because when they came up, that's, they had to do everything for themselves. So when you get with them, you're like, man, just let me. No. You won't let me. No, you can't. Because that's their nature. That's the circumstances that put that in. I remember one night we was out. The sing, and there was a homeless man. And the same song. We was on the way to the car. And the same song, he said, hold up. Hold up, Dad. That he working. He went in the wallet and he went and he ran over to the man and he said, Here. And the man looked at him all kind of crazy. And he said, No, no. And he turned him down. And it seemed like, No, I'm, I'm really mean. 
here. He said, no. And he turned him down. And I told him, see, I said, come on. Come on, because you, you bothered me now. And then the scene was like, why ain't you take the money? I said, you have to put yourself in his shoes. I said, that man passes people every day, all day. And most of the people he passed will not give that man a second look, let alone some money. So his defense mechanism to be able to survive is for him not to depend on the generosity of other people. That's why he told it's not that he don't need the money. It's not that he don't he didn't appreciate your justice. He cannot get comfortable thinking that people are going to be generous to him. His circumstances has forged his mindset a little bit. He had a little understanding. Yes, sir. Huh? That's what he's saying. So he's a wild man, but he's a wild man. His circumstances are going to show you why he's a wild man. His hand against every man and every man's hand against him. He shall dwell in the face of all his brother. One of the, my mother was in the foster system. And I saw that that was one of the greatest things with a lot of the kids that came through there that the first thing you had to do really to win them you had to get their trust because a lot of them been tossed from here they was in one home one night another home another night and another home another night and the world and some of the world been cruel to them and so they come in your house and they expecting the same thing that they've always seen that's what you have to break down first People just think you get them in a the home, be like, oh, this is my son, this is my son. No, it's a lot of things you have to break mm-hmm. down. Then build back up. Yes, sir. And you have to understand where they come from. Yes, sir. That's why I told them when they asked me about getting, I said, no, ma'am. No, sir. Because okay. I understand the plight. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I want to praise the glory be to God. I was just going to say, uh, it was like that when I was teaching in Millville. So the, um, when I used to be a teacher in Millville, everybody, my family kept saying, like, are you sure you want to go out there? And I'm like, yeah, what's wrong? You know, what's wrong with that neighborhood? But when I got out there and I started working with the children, that was when I, the very first day, that's one of the things they told me. They said, oh, you ain't going to be here long. We'll give you two weeks. And you will run you out of here, too, like we did everybody else. And they, I think before I came... I can't remember how many teachers they had went through. I want to say it was maybe four or more within a three month span because they was just running them out. And so uh, for myself, um, I would just say, yeah, I just gave you the wisdom of build the bond with them first and get them to trust me. And once we built that, them big on kids follow me. I've left the school, went to another school. They followed me yeah. to the next school. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to get ready, y'all. Yeah. You know? um, but definitely, um, hallelujah, I just want to share that. Hallelujah. So now we can see the circumstances that precip- that's precipitating the life. Let's go to Genesis 21. Because that's the first time she ran. She ran from a mistress. Hmm? Genesis chapter 21. Yes, first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Yahweh remembered Sarah. And he had said, Yahweh, and Yahweh remembered Sarah as he had said. And Yahweh did unto Sarah as he had spoken. And Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time, at the set time of which Elohim had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old. And Elohim had commanded, as Elohim had commanded him. And Abraham (laughs) 
was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, Elohim have made me to rejoice so that all that hear will rejoice with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham? Who ever thought this was going to happen? Who would have ever said Abraham? That Sarah should have given children suck. For I have born a son in his old age. Not only did I have born him a son, but I'm here and I'm giving the child suck. Wow. And she about a hundred years, close to a hundred years old. Who would it? Huh? Say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I why you do that woman like that, yeah. <laughs> Who would have ever? Young and vibrant at a hunt, she was just starting to live life. Who would not only did a bear the baby, but he here on my breast. Huh? Give it suck. Give it suck. I don't even have to give him to one of the young girls to take the place. He here and he getting sucked right from me. Yes, she just laying there and she can't even believe. She, she, she tickled down. down. <laughs> <laughs> and Abraham come running in and, and his grandpa year, great grandpa year by now. And you know he happy because the true nature, like I said, the true nature had to get older. Huh? It's not for grandparents to raise children. Huh? That's right. That's the that's their parents' job. Okay. You send them to the grandparents, so the grandparents and the child, the grandbaby can have a good time. Yeah. That's all we do. Okay. Right. Yeah. Like I told you, y'all, I'll make that perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. When you do, it's good times. I'm gonna take them and we're gonna run okay. and we're gonna skip. Yes, we're gonna run some more yeah. and we're gonna skip. They're gonna run. Oh, They're they gonna get time. some candy and cookies oh, and donuts. Yeah. And then I'm going to say, come get them. And they're going to have a bag that they go home with with candy cookies. And they're going to be eating it. And you try to take it. They say, tell them. When they try to take it, tell them that Paul Paul gave it to you. And so they're going to, Paul Paul gave me this. And then eat it all. And then when you get home, enjoy yourself. And I'm going to run around and just, just, just have fun. You hear me? That's what Paul Paul said. Hmm? No weapons, unless they just destroy something that's very personal to Paul. Paul, then I got to touch him. <laughs> but in their grandparents and great grandparents' years, when that's what they should be enjoying, she's enjoying her child. Hmm? So she don't know what to do, and Abraham. He run into the tent. He like, oh man, he don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Hmm? And they just happy. That's why she said, "Let's rejoice." Read that six verse again. And Sarah said, "Elohim have made me to rejoice." So that what? All that here will rejoice with me. This whole the whole clan should just be a buzz. Everybody just happy. And Everybody and rejoicing. Everybody laughing, everybody marveling at this, huh? Nothing but good times. Yeah, a whole bunch of old women. Here. That's what she's talking about. But let's see if that's what took place. Pick up in verse eight. And the child grew mm -hmm. and was weaned. He got old and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the mm -hmm. day Isaac was weaned. I mean, at a certain <laughs> time, when the teeth get in there. He shouldn't at five or six or seven year old. He shouldn't still be sitting on your lap talking about mm, 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 mm. you win. You got some women they still had the children at five, six, seven years old, and they still sitting on lap talking. You know, you win them. You win them, huh? Mm -hmm. And so he was weaned, and in the time he was weaned, his father did what? Had a great feast the day that Isaac was weaned. And the day he was weaned. A great feast. <laughs> huh? But what <laughs> took place at this feast? See, Father, this is what I talk about. You need another set of eyes. Because right now, Father Abraham is just what? He's just caught in the rapture huh? of his son. Okay. And a good time. Okay. Huh? Okay. And all the love abounds. He can see around him. He can see no wrong. Okay. 
He's impervious to what's happening. I got two sons. Went from thank you. One went son, from no son. No son. They got two, two sons. sons. Huh? Ooh, oh, his world is in my own age. The, the desire of his heart. Huh? His world is just full. Yeah, he's hmm? happy deal more. <laughs> so he can't see what's going on, but his wife Sarah, especially with her now coming back to her motherly instincts. Huh? You mothers? Huh? The motherly instincts? Huh? Children speak. I know something wrong. Huh? Huh? The motherly instincts. Huh? Huh? They kick in. Yes, so her motherly instincts, mm -hmm. that's what help her be a good protector of her child. Yes, her motherly instincts. That's why it's a travesty when a child meets their demise at the hands of their own mother. Mm -hmm. And I heard about three cases of that this week. Man, every time I mm -hmm. The one lady that got to even evaluate her for mental illness because they got her in the hospital bed. She just talking about how she did what she did to her own baby. And killed it, mm. and they said this. We this is a case for pleading insanity oh because God. the way she's talking to us, that lady can't be, and it ain't no act. She can't be in her right mind. She's she just talking incoherent and saying stuff. She said, "Oh yeah, my husband. He's the he's the salter. He's the 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 one that loves, and I'm the one that's ferocious, and I'm the one that disciplinary. He's even scared of me. This is what she's confessing." Because right now she's in the hospital, they got to change. They're afraid that she's gonna do something to herself. Well, it's yeah. a real live case that's going on as we speak. So they said, "No, we we got to get her in a mental evaluation because she that just ain't right." Because hmm? natural inclination is that the mother will give her life for her child. For her child. Yes, sir. Hmm? Sarah, verse 9, so Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, Ishmael, saw him what? Mocking. Mocking. Hmm? In other words, making sport. In other words, she knew it was harm. Again, she knew it was contempt between her son and this boy. Hmm? And she, she's keeping her eye on him. Oh, yeah. Especially her firstborn. But she know the contempt don't just run from the sun. Mm -hmm. She knows it's coming from someplace else. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. See, all this is in there. It's got to be taught. Mm -hmm. He's receiving this from somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But who's he receiving it from? His mom. The same contempt that was between mm -hmm. her and Sarah before either one of these children is ever conceived has boiled over now and is coming out in one of the children. Hmm? And is what, Elvin? Her, in her wisdom, knowing this, she said what? If that's what's happening, because nothing good can ever come of this. As he get older, he's going to become more aggressive. His behavior going to become worse. Huh? And my son is smack dab in his sights. I might wake up one day, and my son is taken away from me. Like Cain and Abel. Yes. Hmm? So she said, wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. He, he's going to want some of your kingdom. You think he's the oldest? Just think, husband, he's the oldest. He's the firstborn. He's the firstborn. His mother probably told him that you rightfully deserve everything. Everything is yours. You're entitled. To you. When you tell him that he's not there, you think that will sit well with him? You know, baby, you have to send him away. Hmm? Huh? Well, what does it say about Abraham? Let's see if he's such a dead be dad. Well, let's see if he's unrighteous. Mm. And the thing when she told him this, when she told him this, it says the thing was what? Very, very grievous. Very grievous. It's Abraham's sight. 
on the account of his son. So when she told him that she, he went, ah, huh? He didn't disagree with, it. yeah, you think, yeah, let's get him on out of here because because I got eyes again. He didn't do that. Right. When she told him, he said, why? What are you talking about? It's my son. Both my sons. Both of them raised under my roof. He ain't going to do nothing there, boy. I think you're stretching things. I think you, you're full of drama. That's my baby. There's no way I can kick him out of here. Huh? So what had to happen? See, let's see if his son, let's see if not only if Abraham is unright, let's see if Sarah is unrighteous. Because now a third party is about to come in. And Elohim came in and said, because surely if Abraham is unrighteous for doing it, and Sarah unrighteous for suggesting it, then surely what we're about to read, we going we can say that Yah is unrighteous. Right. Mm. And I know we ain't gonna say that. All right. I would hope nobody would say that. For Elohim himself says unto Abraham, knowing how much is bothering him, knowing how much this is plaguing him, knowing how much that suggestion alone is hurting him. Boy, y'all still for me. Oh, y'all was talking. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. He said, and Elohim said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman, and that Sarah has said unto you. Listen unto her voice, for in Isaac shall your seed be called. That's the promised child. I also, and also of the son of our bondwoman, will I make a nation, and I will do so what? Because, because he is thy seed. He is your seed. And the Almighty is telling him this himself. To ease his mind and helping him make the decision that the child has to go. Listen to your wife. She's telling you what's right. This child cannot stay with this child or your house will be in upheaval. Listen. All your wife this time. Hmm? She's speaking wisdom. And don't worry about when you do it. He's going to be okay. So Abram rose early in the morning and took bread. We don't know how much bread, but he took bread. That's all it said. He took a bottle of water. Now here's what no people. He gave her a bottle of water. Huh? Huh? But Here's the kicker. What did we just read? I'm going to see who was up and who was paying attention. What did we read happen when she ran the first time? The angel mm -hmm. told her to return back and subdue herself under her mistress because the child going to be all right. And he told her and he, he, he assured he her this, the promise that Yah gave unto Abraham about the seed. What else did we read? See, we wanted to be for elders and sisters. She showed the wisdom. I'm giving you a hint. He gave her a bottle of water. But the first time she ran, what happened? She ran. There you go. Yes, Elder. The first time she ran, she found her way by a what? Go back to 16. Because that's where the angel of Yah found her then. 16 and 7. And the angel of Yahweh found her by a fountain a of fountain, water. A fountain of water in, in the, the wilderness. wilderness. Huh? By the fountain in the way of Shear. Huh? So because she left with a bottle of water, that don't mean that she wasn't going to have the capability of finding her way to other sources where she could refill that bottle of water. Because the Almighty was going to lead us. Oh, yeah. Now let's go back to 21. 
See, don't let it throw you off that it just says he gave her a bottle of water. Men left with just one day bottle of water. But when they were guided by the Almighty, they were able to stay by the way where water was. Because just as the children of Israel, we left and it don't say we had any water stored up. But he kept us by what? Water. That's what it even says in Moses' Decalogue. He kept you with Mayim and he kept you with Lakim. He kept you in the way where there was water. Even when you didn't see it and know it was there, he would provide water. See, this is just the person that's short-sighted that would say he gave her one bottle of water. <laughs> he beat that. When he able to take her from there and put her in a pond, a fountain, a water abundant. Because that's exactly what he going to do if we keep reading it. Three, back in 21, 20, uh, 21, 14, and 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed. And wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. What was he supposed to do? Give her a whole bunch of bags of gold and silver and send her out where she gonna get robbed? Somebody see her coming, they're gonna bust her upside the head. Look, she got all that gold, silver, and she by herself and with a child. Huh? Come on, that that huh? Huh? Putting her in harm way. He gave her what he knew was sufficient, and he knew that Yah was gonna handle the rest of the journey because Yah has already spoke to him. Concerning this matter. Oh, God. He sent her away. And she departed. And she wandered into the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spit in the bottle. Mm -hmm. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Yes. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off. Mm -hmm. As it were a bow shot. She went and put him somewhere one place, then she went and put great distance between them as if it was a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. I can't stand to watch my baby perish. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And Elohim heard the voice of the lad. Her tears, the water of her tears, the Almighty heard her voice as she wept. And the angel of Elohim called to Hagar out of the heavens and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, but Elohim have heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, Arise. lift up the lad mm -hmm. and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Well, I told Abraham his father that he's going to be a great nation, and that's what I endeavor to fulfill and elohim opened her eyes and what she didn't see because of despair what she didn't see in front of her because of doubt he opened her eyes and she saw a will it had always been there the water well no mirage didn't just magically appear it had always been there how many times have you looked for something and because you were in such a rush or stressed out or over Burden with it, you look right over. Yep. It's always it's right there, but you look right over. Right in front of you. But it's right there, huh? Yep. I've done it a number of times. It was a snake in the ditch. Because, like I said, it wasn't that somebody just built the well in a few minutes, or that it just magically appeared. It was always there. But the only thing that was on her mind at that time was the life of her son and the life. In her life, and as she put her son where she laid him, all she did was went and laid down and started to cry and mourn. And the Almighty had to redirect her and show her and say, look over there. It's a well with water. That child ain't going to perish. Hmm? Get up. Get up. Hmm? And she went to the well and what? 
filled with the bottle. Filled with the bottle that he gave, that Abraham gave him, filled it with water, and gave the lad drink. And Elohim was with the lad, and the lad grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. This is why he became a wild man. Where did he dwell? In the wilderness. Huh? In the wilderness. In the wilderness. In the wild. And he became an archer. An archer, not only an archer, that's a hunter, a skilled warrior. Because he learned and perfected the bow. He learned what it was because this is how he lived. So it was a struggle of life and death for him to eat. See, nobody providing for him to eat. He got to go get it. Huh? This is what I was telling you earlier. This, he got to build it. He got to afford it for himself. This is why he becomes a wild man. This is why his disposition is he be against every man and every man be against him. Because his nature now is, man, if I have to survive, I have to make it happen. Hmm? And that's why even today you see it playing out, even all the way down to some of his descendants. That's why you see a wild man that's dwelling with men or the descendants of a wild man that's dwelling with the descendants of a man who was blessed, but who was blessed to live by his sword. <laughs> huh? That just went over your head. I know it did. Huh? See, the world is the world is told by the Almighty. Huh? One of the sons of Father Abraham. Huh? Ishmael. Ishmael. Creator says he'll be all right. But his characteristics. Wow, man. Be a wild man. Huh? Now, many years down the line, there's another son born. Huh? And his name is? Esau. 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 Huh? Yes, sir. And Esau don't get, and look at the, look at how all of it just run together. Firstborn hmm, of Abraham. Thought he was the heir, but the heir went to Isaac. Huh? Isaac Look at the similarity. Firstborn Isaac. of Isaac, thought he should be the heir, but the promise already was set, so it went to Jacob. So the blessing that he got, the blessing he got was to become a wild man. Aggressive. Take. The blessing he got was to live by his sword. His sword. Yes, sir. Or the sword. That's his blessing. So you have a wild man. Now it's his nature. And his nature going to stay with his descendants. See, I didn't think all this would even work together. You thought you would ask me about some crazy dogs and rabbits and that <laughs> thing. Hmm? But now I'm just showing you nature. This is going to transfer into his lineage. lineage. Okay. This characteristic, these ideas, this mindset. When he give birth, because we got to finish this out. Because he's going, that's why the Almighty is telling you all this. Twelve princes. Cool. Should he give birth to? He's going to be a great nation. Mm -hmm. That whole nation. Hmm? This man gonna become a great people. That's why our father Jacob, when he fled from Laban and he heard that he was out there, he said, Man, oh, oh, he saw my brother. He said, Yeah. He said, What we let me put the family in order that if somebody get caught up, it won't be the ones I love the most. Now somebody might have something to say about that, right? But that's just his thinking. Hmm? Because the last time he left this man, he was very hot. 
not only the last time, but growing up with him in childhood, this man always got the best of him. He know he's not a warrior like his brother. That's why when his brother come, he don't have no service. That's why when they meet and Esau leave, Esau said, look, some of the men I brought with me, I'm going to leave them with you. Because I see your family. I see some servants. But you ain't got no warriors. You ain't got none. Somebody attack you, they're going to dust y'all like it ain't nobody. You ain't got no head crack. I'm going to leave you somebody. I'm going to leave you my men. Because we've been, we been banging. <laughs> While you've been serving, we've been banging. That's why I don't even feel no way about you, brother, because I'm all right. I done carved out my kingdom. And I carved it out by the sword. Well, this goes to his lineage. Hmm? So anybody that stands in the steed of these lineages come in the modern day, anybody that stands in the steed of these lineages, this is what they perform. And you ask why there ain't no peace in the Middle East. Because you got the lineage of Ishmael, who's a wild man, aggressive, and the lineage of Ishmael, who must live by a sword, and they both in the land as neighbors. Now, the only one that's not there is the person that it rightfully belonged to, who's supposed to dwell there in peace. <laughs> that's why if you go home, you might go home and hear them talking about Iran raining missiles down on Israel. Because as early as this morning, before I came to class, that's what Israel is heightened alert for. Yeah. They got things shut down. No more than a thousand people. They got maxed out. Gatherings, if it's gatherings, it can be no more than a thousand people. They almost got a martial law set in place in Israel. Because at any moment now, it ain't no guessing. It ain't no maybe. They said the threat is imminent. We just waiting on when it happens. This country got 140 warheads pointed at us, and they meant to use them all. Yes, at any moment, you can wake up and all further hell, you thought it was hell so far, all further hell is capable of breaking loose. Trying to wipe them, just as he said about Hezbollah, and just as he said about Palestine, that Netanyahu, that he wanted to wipe them, he wanted to get rid of the Gaza conflict pit, then the whole Muslim world. See, this is the thing you have to study. He had brought, he don't understand that what he did, he bringing all of Islam against him. The whole Muslim world now is ready to turn their eye on them. And the Almighty says something about this because he said, your neighbors have deceived you. When it really get hot, they're going to leave you. Just keep watching. These scriptures, is, I tell you, they, they, and you ask about the book, it is, the book is very real. The book of coming forth by day, the Egyptian Chronicles, it can't tell you nothing about this going on. New Testament can't, but New Testament going to tell you, there are wars and rumors of wars. That's all. Here, if you let the Almighty give you the understanding, you're going to be able to break down exactly what's happening. And it ain't happening in Nigeria. It ain't happening in Ghana. It ain't happening in Mozambique. It ain't happening in Zimbabwe. It's happening right where the Almighty said it was going to happen when he said, and I will be magnified from the borders of Israel. Because that's where Israel always was. Huh? And that's what he's doing. Hmm? Prophecies spoken thousands of years ago are being fulfilled. Hmm? That's our great Yah. Oh, yeah. So no, Father Hiram was not unrighteous. He was doing what he was told to do, even by the Most High himself, because the Almighty had already assured him the destiny of his son, and that the two sons couldn't dwell together.
Any comment from that from anybody? I just want to say something that I kind of recognize. Um, all praises to Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, all praises to Yah. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I kind of noticed that when uh, uh, Sister Sarah, when she had her child, she was able to uh, give suck. Mm -hmm. But when they put uh, Moses in the basket and sent him up the stream, the, uh, she, he told the sister to take her, take her back down to the mother and let her nurse him. Because she wasn't able to. And she was up in age as well, right? I just noticed how that was, how Yahweh made it possible for Sarah to in her age to give uh, the child suck but i was just thinking about when moses went up the stream uh the pharaoh's daughter yeah pharaoh's daughter she mm -hmm. told him to take her back down to the mama and let her give him you know and and her milk was already dried up in her well pharaoh's daughter wasn't that was the the thing and that was the thing pharaoh's daughter was royalty so that's what she said take him back down and that find me a nurse Find me, and the thing about it is that's the truth. Because Pharaoh's daughter knew who she took from the river. She knew why he was in the river. She knew he wasn't no Egyptian thrown in the river. She asked him to take him back down. You see? So she knew she was dealing and she knew to eat it. It was a big thing. This one of the Hebrew babies. She said, Well, take him back, take him back down there to one of the Hebrew women and let them nurse him. Then when he get nursed, he can come back to me. She didn't know he was going back. To his mother. Right. That's the divine will of the Almighty as well. Okay. His mother put him in the river to save him, but he let her know, hey, he's coming back to you. And she nursed him all his formidable years. Right. She nursed him. That's why when he grow up, he's going to be a breast, even as Prince of Egypt. These are my people. And that's why I say he can look at the Egyptian and know that one when he look at him one day and say, man, the dude out here acting crazy on against my people. Nah. Y'all get good, huh? Doing his brothers a favor. Now they, huh? Just like Israel. They're going to do that to us too. Now he said, boy, these fools going to tell on me. And I'm the one to save them. Right. I did a favor for them and uh, kind of showed kindness to them and they going to act the fool. So, but yeah, that, it's beautiful how the Almighty, how the Almighty did that. Because he knew that's why he had her find it. Because he knew once you're royalty. And that's how, and so you got to think about royalty. A little bit uppity. Oh, huh? I was about to say, you know, that little air. That. You know, they got, so, because even if he was an Egyptian, she would have mistress, she yeah. would have people yeah. that tend to her child. She wasn't there to tend, she would have people tend to the child. Exactly. You see? So, but this case, she just happened to know, hey, take him back on down in there then. He's, he's clear from harm, ain't gonna kill him. That part is over. Take him back down and find him up. And, and marry him, thinking like she's thinking. She said, yeah, I'm a perfect woman. Take him back to the mom. <laughs> That's what I said. Moses, the truth of the matter is, and we esteem that name. Because hmm? that's the name we know. Yeah. Well, that's not his Hebrew name. And that's his Egyptian know. name. Yeah. Most shocked. He drawn from the water. But you can better believe when he got back down there and got in his mother's hands, she called him by his Hebrew name. We just don't know it. We just don't know it. Yeah, I watched the movie about Moses. They had like a little, little, like a little movie on Moses. And in the movie, in the movie, they had it to where they said that Pharaoh's daughter had lost her child, had miscarried her child. And that was the reason why she was down at the at the water at the river's banks, giving herself water, because she had lost her child and she was down there grieving. When the child, when Moses, when Moses came strolling down the river, and ended up getting caught on the rock along the shore. So, but then when you read the story, you don't read that she right. was uh, pregnant or lost a child. It just says. That she was down at the river to give to cleanse herself. To water. And she was down, and it don't say it. Like I said, that's 
That's all good. Because even the Ten Commandments itself, not all that is Bible. It's got things added in to make it a movie, like all right. other movies. Right. Why is she at the, why is she at the river? Yeah. She at the river the same reason why Pharaoh at the river. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Down the river to wash herself. That's a great drama. Matter where the word is, it's kind of fun. Yeah, that word. Yes, I mean, Exodus 2, verse 5. And daughter and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Mm -hmm. And her maidens walked along by the river side when she saw the ark among the flags. She sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the boy wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then she then said his sister, the Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Now why does she go to the river? Because when you study Egyptian culture, the rivers, the rivers are an essential part of Egyptian life. And she would learn this custom of going to the rivers to wash herself, as the books say, and maybe even sometime to, like her father, or like a predecessor, or like a kin, when you read the seventh chapter, the 15th verse. Hallelujah. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. When he goeth out unto the water. When he what? Go out unto the water, huh? and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against it. When he go water. out to the waters, and again, he might go out to the water to bless them. He might go out to the waters to take a dip in them. But he every morning, he goes he to the waters. Water. And that's where she would learn it, that she would go uh, to the waters. Amen. It just so happened this particular day she go to the waters. Here comes the baby Moses. Upstream, hmm? and she found a basket, hmm? and like all children, she had compassion because that's what children do. Mm -hmm. I see children, I'm like, oh, look at they just, a, huh? Mm -hmm. Hmm? You see, <laughs> that's why it had. To, that's why you had to get in the mind of our people, and y'all might would tell our people to go and say, kill all the women that have no man. And the children, huh? Yes, sir. That's a you, you. I guess people be like, when well, the children of Israel didn't do it, yeah, you probably wouldn't do it either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look at that instant child just stand there, he's smiling, and he look big child, and he's smiling at you almost and want to play with you, and you give a commandment to run it through. Tell me, you gonna do it? Tell no lies. I done had stories, you know, my brothers. And then when Somalia happened, when Somalia happened in 1994, Black Hawk Down, 93, 94, Somalia happened. And those brothers went over there, even some of those stories come back from Desert Shield also, a desert storm. And they go over there and they be in the camp and they see the kids. And they giving the kids little things and trinkets and things like that because the kids come in there friendly and free. But the kid come in as a ticket time. Next mom. thing you know, boom. Kid come in there playing and everything. Next thing you know, boom. Kid blow up. Or the kid come in there and the kid got a grenade with yeah. him. Or the kid got a gun with him. And he just come in because he a kid. And he just come in and open fire so yeah. many times. You hear stories. And then you get other stories that come back of what some of the people was doing to them kids, too. That's part of it. That's part of the PTSD that these fellows, these yes. young people yes, come sir. back with. 
because they've seen all kinds of things that the mind ain't supposed to be wrapping his head around. It's adverse to your original nature, your original nature as a mother and father, young women that go into search or fathers. Your nature is, man, a child, protect, protect. Now you go and you see all this derogation of life, like you said, man, he a sniper, and he give commandment, yeah. take him, take him. Little four or five-year-old Ethan, imagine, huh, yeah. running down the street. Take him, take, take him now. Pop! And he just dropped. First thing you, yeah. you just, you just got a movie out about that. You, you, you all, your mind is all messed up. Yeah. Yes, I got a nine-year-old son. You see? And so they they see all this, and it, it's not no, it, it, it's not no, it, and they they not just gonna come home and and be able to pick up life and live and, and live in, in a normal. That that's a lot for them to work with. That's why the creator said you avoid it if you can. Proclaim yeah. peace. Yeah. Unless I told you just to utterly oblivious. Proclaim peace. Let's avoid war. Okay. Hmm. We're going to close out on this. What other questions? I have the others. I have more. But this segment. And it wanted to know that when the Almighty came to see Father Abraham, did he come from another dimension? When the creator wanted to come see Father Abraham, did he come out of another dimension? <laughs> the creator, let me say this. The creator is existence. That's why we say there's nothing that existed before him. There's nothing existed and will exist after him. And he is omnipresent. So he comes from his holy abode. And that's a secret. That place is a secret. And that place is a mystery. And it's meant to be a mystery. And it's been a mystery even to the most righteous of us. That's why we start in the book of Proverbs. Like I said, this will be the last question for today. Proverbs. We was able to save Smokey. <laughs> Nobody's going out and hunt Smokey. He all right. They out there killing Smokey right now. We was, we was able to save Joe the camel. He, he cool. Hmm? Proverbs 30. See, this is, it says the secret things, not in Proverbs, but it says in the scriptures, the secret things belong unto, belong unto Yah. Yes, so there are some things that we just ain't supposed to have the answer to. Hallelujah. And one of those things is pinpoint where does he dwell? Where is the Lord to eat? Where is he at? Well, that, that's, that's hinted and clue. We know where that's at. We know where that's at because it's description. We know the region. We might not know Exact, but then if you know scriptures, that's kind of solved. But I won't get into that today. But the dwelling place of the most high, yeah. that that's his. Dwell everywhere. That's his. And that's why I'm Proverbs. Yes, sir. 30. Yes, sir. Verse 1. Hallelujah. The words of Agur, the son of Yaqi. Even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel, and you call. Surely, I am more brutish than any man. I'm more brutish, he said, than any man. In other words, he was humbling himself. He said, I'm more brutish. Brutish, in a sense, tend to mean brute, dumb. But he's not dumb at all, but he's humbling himself. He said, like, unlike other men, because see, there's some other teachers and some other Places you probably can ask this, and they're gonna say, Well, you know, yes, he come out the fifth dimension from this, like some people are saying. 
these people. This is what really means. This is who God really was that the Hebrews is talking about. They come out of these people and they in a space and a planet in the second dimension and they go off again talking about a lot of stuff and ain't saying nothing. Huh? But they will because they can't humble themselves. Huh? But he says, surely I am more brutish than any man. And have not the understanding of men. And I don't have the understanding that men have. And that's not bad all the time. Because man's understanding is war. Hmm? I'm not telling you the, the earth is so many millions of years. Well, who said it is? Right. I ain't saying it is. I ain't saying it's not. But who said it is? Yeah. Because you come up with a theory, a theory of carbon yeah. dating. Yeah. <laughs> which could definitely be wrong. Uh, he come up and said a lot of times, well, we were wrong about this. Mm -hmm. it, ain't, it, it ain't what we thought it was. It wrecked our theory. Hmm? So don't put all our trust in all those things. Yeah. Hmm? Well, <laughs> and that's why they put, they because see that's why people say, well, the dinosaur, then it, when I read these scriptures, huh, mm -hmm. it let me know. And then when I start looking at Sure, dinosaur could have, yes, they really sure they could have existed because the maximum dinosaur only was about 60 feet long. That's a tractor trailer in length. Why now he was a massive species, and that's why I even said who can even do anything to him except his maker. So the one that brought him into existence, he was the only one that took him out. Man couldn't hunt him and extinguish him. Huh? Man feared him because he was a massive beast, unlike any other beast. And the Almighty knew he wasn't going to adapt hmm, or acquiesce like all So some of them, some of that species, he got rid of. But let me tell you what science will say. I know someone else said, well, hey, why did you use a sign that? You just said you can't believe it. Well, they said the oldest living reptile, hello, that's akin and descendant from the ancient Leviathan is the crocodile. Crocodile, right. The crocodile. It was the crocodile. And nobody really even knows his origin. Mm -hmm. He almost looked like what one would call an aquatic dragon or something. Hmm? Oh, no. And they say massive. The ones that they say they really don't even know, yeah. and nobody even want to really catch yeah. the one that's massive. Mm -hmm. It's like that girl just the other day caught a hundred and one pound catfish. Mm -hmm. Girl drug it out the water right there in New Richmond. Mm -hmm. Hundred and one pounds. She was noon. It was. She was. Hand. She was jug fishing. Yep. Jug fishing. Yeah, hundred and one pound. Well, Big old thing. Threw him back in, oh, threw him back in the water. Mm -hmm. So that was said. It's secret things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, that one and they should, they should remain yeah. secrets, mm -hmm. and that belonged to the Almighty, huh? And that's what he said. So I, he said, I don't have to understand the man. I neither learnt wisdom nor mm -hmm. have the knowledge of the holy. And if you understand and see that holy, they have a word on me. Mm -mm. Or, uh, a lower age. A lowercase age. Yeah. See, if we were talking about the Almighty, that would be capital. Right. Okay. But he's got a lowercase H. He talking about the holier than thou people that think they know everything and don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. But they always got to give you the answer to everything. <laughs> they can't even never tell you. I don't know. No, they got to tell you the answer to everything. Yeah. Yeah. Even some of my even when they converse, even some of my brethren in this one. It came out of triple darkness. I said, well, what's triple darkness? It's the triple darkness of the dis of the dispensation of the dis <laughs> <laughs> I hate I even asked. <laughs> triple darkness. Like darkness. Yeah, they say triple dark, triple growth darkness. Mm -hmm. Black man 77 7 trillion years old. I said, what? Hey, where you get them numbers from? That's what I said. Where you get them numbers from? <laughs> well, where you get them numbers from? What, what's that origin? Yeah. Hmm? I ain't never seen every. And who kept up? 
Right. <laughs> that's the way they still here. That's why I asked like about the show. I put sentence together because but this is what you really get. Yeah. Huh? Uh, and understand the way of the world. When you can make things seem like it's real struggling, yeah. people gonna latch on. Mm -hmm. But when you simplify things, I ain't. Yeah. Huh? And that's what that's what this whole thing is setting up. Mm -hmm. hmm? He said, I need to learn wisdom, nor have knowledge of the holy. He said, but let me ask you a question. He said, but this is a question. Hmm? He said, this is a question. Who has ascended up to heaven? Huh? Mm. And you can ask that today, and a lot of people yes, don't get it wrong. Yes, sir. Who has ascended to heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fist? Who have bound the waters in his garments? Who have established all the ends of the earth? Who have done all these things? What is his name? What is his son's name? Huh? As some people, he have many names. Yeah, yes. I've heard that too. I got it. Somebody yesterday about that. They called him this. They called him that. They called him this. They called him that. Don't you got many names? I was on the parking lot yesterday. Man said, man said, hey. He said, hey. I don't think he probably could recollect my name. He said, hey. I said after the third, hey. I said. He must be trying to get my attention. Let me just peer on my shoulder and see who it is. But my name ain't Hey. <laughs> that ain't my name. Hey, huh? Hey is not my name. Huh? You call me many things. I've been called many things. We'll be continue to call many things. But I respond to my name. That's why he's saying, what is his name? He have a name. Don't give me this. He got many names. He have a name. Might have many titles, many attributes, but he have one name. And that's why he asked him, well, what is his name? And what's the name of his son? Huh? If you know it. And that's why he has to tell him, see, every, what I go by is that every word of Yah is pure. Hmm? He was sealed unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, least he reproves thee, and you be found a liar. So that's the first thing he wanted. No, he asked a series of questions, and the first little question is who can ascend and descend like that? Who can come from nothing and come into existence? And who can leave and you don't know where he went? Seven. That's what he's asking. Huh? Who can do that? Proverbs 3. I'm about to say 29. I was looking at 29. That's all. Proverbs 3. 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 Proverbs Look at Isaiah 66. <laughs> Isaiah 66 and verse 1. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. <laughs> They, 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 they bright. They bright. A He like the tin man in the wheel. A There you go, do it till you get that. Yes, There you go. Thank you. Thank you. That's right, big boy. Thank you. Try. Thank you. Learn early. Because it's going to serve you well in, in years later. Cry. 
Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. Do women cry? <laughs> Thus said Yahweh, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. The what? The heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? It's the heavens is his throne. That's the place he resides. Not like he just sitting in outer space, like Thanos on a rock, on a chair. No, this is where he resides. So it's like his throne. And the earth, because of his omnipotence, the earth, when he touches down on it, when he descended on it. It's like his footstool. This is what you call a euphemism in a sense. Then Solomon would write in 2 Chronicles, the sixth chapter. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter six. Chapter six. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, like I said, I agree that he dwelled in darkness, but I don't know. I ain't never heard of no <laughs> triple, triple darkness. It's six and one. So then says Solomon, Yahweh have said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. That's where he dwell. Hmm? And Solomon said that's where he dwell. He dwell in the thick darkness. And let me tell you something. That's a place that no man can tell you about because ain't no man supposed to be there. Can't get there. That's the heaven We don't know. It's unknown. But you can't see how that thick darkness looks. Because thick darkness is what he allowed to come on Egypt. Yeah. And no man could even move in. So if thick darkness he allowed to come on Egypt and it paralyzes, what man think he should be holding the Almighty in thick going to see him in thick darkness? How you gonna find your way? That's why the creator said, and I will come down and dwell among the children of Israel. Even when I save them, I got to come down and dwell with them. Right. Never worry about it. I'm going to bring them up. Yeah. That's what Lucifer is trying to do. He's trying to find a way to get to that next level. But Solomon <laughs> said, Yah said he would dwell in the thick darkness. But I have built a house of habitation for thee. And a place for thy dwelling forever. The king turned his face. And blessed the whole congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood and said, Blessed be Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, who with his hands fulfilled that which he spake to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people. Second Chronicles 6 chapter. Right now we're in the fifth verse. But I have chosen Jerusalem. That my name might be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. That's who he had chosen. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name. So he keeps saying for the name. Because that's the only thing he said this house can house. It can't house him. Oh my, that's us. Talking about my, my place is better than your place. You need to be here because we got this. We got that. That don't impress y'all. Right. He said the only thing that the houses is for is to house his name. And occasionally he might let some of his presence come down. 
And when he does that, nobody can be there with him. But this is surely to pay homage to him and the house. Isn't that his name just that great? For Yahweh has said to my father David, for much as it was in your heart to build my name, you know, and you wasn't even thinking about me having a house. You purpose to build for me. So grand, so great, so marvelous, so beautiful. And we're going places. Build the house. But your son, which will come forth out of your loins, he shall build the house for my name. And that son is not Christ. See, the New Testament is going to try to tell you that this meant that Christ is going to build the house of Yah. This already cleared it up. That's why Solomon said, my, he have already fulfilled. That's why you go back and read where he said, Blessed be Yah who have already fulfilled what he promised to my father David when he put me. And that's what he's about to tell you, how he had fulfilled it. Yahweh, therefore, has performed, already done it, his word that he has spoken. He's already done it. We don't have to wait no more. It's done. The word he spoke to my father. For And why? For I am risen up in the room of David, my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as Yah have promised, and have built the house for his name of Yah, the Elohim of Israel, for his name. And in the house, in it, have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of Yah, that he made with the children of Israel. And he, Solomon, stood before the altar of Yah in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold, five cubits long, five cubits broad, three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down on his knees before all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands towards heaven. And began his prayer, saying, O oh, Yah Elohim of Israel, there is no Elohim, there is no God like you in the heaven nor in the earth. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. You can't find one like you in the heaven. Huh? Yes, sir. And why I tell people, everybody got their own religion. No, it can't be a bunch of religions. <laughs> The heavens can't have a Muslim or Islamic section and an Israelite section and a Christian section and a Buddhist section and a Hindu section. The heavens, that, that ain't what's going on up there. Huh? There's one. And Solomon said, there's nobody like you in the heaven, nor is there anybody like you in earth. So that don't look for nobody to come down on earth and say the most high or make him the most high. Huh? That keep him covenant, that show of mercy unto your servants, that walk before you with all their hearts. Hmm? The great things you will do for them that love your commandments and keep your commandments. The one and you have fulfilled it with your hand. As it is this day. Now, therefore, O Yah Elohim of Israel, keep with thy servant my father that which thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel. Where is this recorded at, brothers and sisters? Psalms. Psalms, yeah. Amen. The promise of David. Huh? If thy children take heed, they shall not fail to sit upon thy throne. If the children take heed to their way to walk in my law, as thou have walked before me. 
Now then, O Yah, Elohim of Israel, let thy word be verified which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will Yahweh Elohim in very deed dwell on earth with men? Watch this statement. Behold, the heavens, huh? The heaven and the heaven of heavens. Then you understood that all people had a concept of space. He said, the heaven, the Lakia, and the heavens of heavens huh? cannot contain thee. I can't tell you where y'all dwell. Because the heaven can't contain him, and the heaven of heavens can't contain him. So then where can I tell you he dwell? I can't tell you where he dwell. It said he everywhere. Huh? That's it. That's what I could tell you. But the secret place from whence he dwell, from whence he coming, and from whence he go, no man knows that. That belonged to him. Hmm? So one won't say dimensions. Maybe they can. One won't say this, maybe they can, but I don't think that anybody definitely can say where the Almighty is coming from. He is existence itself. That's why his father Abraham sat there and was relaxed. He looked up and he saw the men. He said, man, where the men, where they coming from? I know that road. I know what it takes to get down that road. How do you men get? They must come to mind. It became apparent and obvious to him. No, nah, these ain't regular men. That's my master. That's my master. And he decided to come down on earth and pay me, his lowly servant, a visit. Hmm? And I'm going to be on my best because I don't want him to pass me by. Yeah. Hmm. That's y'all. So he come where he come from, he come from wheresoever he will. That's why he said, My name is Yah. I will be what I will be. I am existent, personified itself. Sun is going down, day has come to an end. It must close. Are there any comments from anybody before we adjourn? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom. So I see in this one, right, that Solomon built the house. Yes. I guess my question is, what house did Christ of the New Testament build? <laughs> or build it? Did he build any house? Or did he just yes, go to a house? Because only I remember he said in Revelation, I'm going to my father got many mansions. I'm going to my one to prepare to prepare a place in my father's house. But nowhere I remember, I can't recall if he ever built a house. You can't recall it because it never happened. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that crisis gets told down. That's why you was doing brother Dr. Spice. Not even the not even the spiritual house. Did he mention it? Was it mentioned? Did he mention about building one? Well, he himself, no. Uh, Paul did. Uh, that's what it was. <laughs> he always referred to his father's house. Mm -hmm. He always referred to his father's kingdom. He never said, I'm building the kingdom. He said, he said, of my father's kingdom, even in his prayer, they, when they asked him how to pray. He said, this is how we pray. Our Father, whose art is in heaven, hallow, hallow be thy name. Your kingdom come. He never said our kingdom come or my kingdom come. He said, your kingdom come. Your will be done. To the Father on earth as it is in heaven. That's what he said. 
it was always his father's kingdom. Blessed are they that are children that they may receive the kingdom, the kingdom. He's talking about his father's kingdom. So when he was like the high guy just asked about people who said in my father's house is many mansions. And mansions is probably he was talking about there are many rooms. And I go to prepare a place for you. I go to make a way for you. I go to be the one that attests to you being able to get into the kingdom. Like a doorkeeper, yes, like a doorkeeper. So where was this like through me. He was talking about the he was talking about the house of the Almighty, the spiritual house. And he was the access. That's why he say, "I am the way, the truth, and the light." No, and that's the way to get through to the house. <laughs> Any other comments? But he always acknowledged that it wasn't his house. Yeah. Even now, he's talking about. He always acknowledged that it's his father's house. Yeah. It's his father's kingdom. <laughs> hmm? That's why he says, and we'll close out on this. Since my brother brought up Revelation. Look at verse, look at chapter 3, verse 12. Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. How do God? Him that overcometh will have him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim. I'll make him a pillar in the temple. Oh, my Elohim. And he shall go no more out. I mean, the temple belonged to Elohim. He said, I'll make him a pillar if he overcomes. I'll make him a pillar in the temple of my Elohim. And he will go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my Elohim. Which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down three Revelation three twelve and verse twelve. Which is New Jerusalem, which come down. No talk of nobody going up. Right. Which comes down. Huh? Out of heaven from my LOI. And I will write upon him. My new name as well. So if you take that for face value, the kingdom is coming down. Just like he prayed. And he said the kingdom, just like he prayed, belonged to the most high. This is what he said. kingdom come down, the kingdom on earth. And then this is the last thing. And he said and the kingdom will come down on earth. The kingdom come down. So what they talking about we going up to heaven? Uh, nobody. <laughs> not out of his mouth. <laughs> and the kingdom is on earth and the kingdom have gates. And then look what he says because everybody want to get in the kingdom. This is the last, this is the last thing since everybody want to get in the kingdom. Look what he says. Revelation 22, 14 verse. Everybody want to get in the key, the blood of Christ. Because that's not what he said. So this ain't me. And remember, Revelation said, if you don't believe all the words of the book, you curse. So let's see what he said. 14th chapter, he said, 
Blessed are they that do his commandments. You want to get in this kingdom, you have to do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That, that they may, didn't guarantee, that they may have right to the tree of life. Hmm? That you can get into the commandment and the goal is to get into the kingdom and be able to get access to live forever. Right. <clears throat> and enter through the gates into the city. For on the outside of the city, there are dogs. Hmm? Yeah. And he ain't talking about last. He's talking about dogs, men that are like dogs. There's sorcerers. There's whoremongers for brothers. Whoremongers. But if the whoremonger is outside the city, then the whore is outside the city. That's right. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Oh, huh? Yes, sir. You can sing, lay your head on my pillow. You can. Lay it on the pillow right outside the city, burning with more than just passion. Hmm? <laughs> Idolaters, ooh, that's worshippers of false gods. Yeah. They're on the outside of the city. And whosoever, and watch this one, whosoever loves and makes a lie. If you love lying, no access to the city. Mm. If you love making lies, mm. no access to the city. Mm. Making a lie. Yes. No access to the city. Love being deceit. This is what he said. Yes, and deceit in there. Huh? All these things against the commandments. So you may have to start rethinking. If you come up under a doctrine saying that you don't have to keep God's commandment, you might want to start rethinking that. If the goal is to get into the city and have access to the tree of life that you may live forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We about to adjourn. I want to thank everybody for your attention, your cooperation. Pray that Yah made this day fruitful. I pray that anyone that will hear this, it will find a space in your mind, in your heart. Not asking nobody to believe, but consider. At least consider. Consider the words of the Most High Yah. And that will be the start. But again, we want to thank everybody. Pray that Yahweh remain with you, will keep you, guide you, show you his truth. And by the way, tomorrow, 4 o'clock, you can look up on YouTube and Facebook, Seter, S-E-T-H-E-R, Seter Elion, L-E-Y-O-N, Seter Elion. And our soul, let us reason together. Or let us reason. It will be on, let I know, four o'clock. We're going to get it where it's four to five. We're not going to try to hold you and have Bible study with you all the afternoon or evening. But we just want to take a little more time to glorify the Creator again. And I think tomorrow we're going to talk about a, a good topic. Oh, what is it, Brother Aaron? I don't know, but it's going to be a good time. <laughs> but join us tomorrow if you can at 4 o'clock. Sit there, Elion. You can call in, you can type in if you have a question, and we'd be glad to have you with us. But for right now, that concludes our Sabbath day. Yes, I see a hand. I just want to know what that meant. The secret place of the Most High. Okay. Oh, yeah. We want to thank everybody. <laughs> To join us, and we want you to know that Yah loves you.
And we pray that we'll be back here with you next week at the same holy time, same holy place, same holy day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand, let us adjourn. Shema. Shema. Israel. 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 Yahweh. 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 Yahwe